Hi friends, it's Donna. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I haven't seen you guys in a really long time. Excuse the uh, the messy bun. It's a messy bun kind of day. <laughs> Been running around like a lunatic. Thank you everyone for coming back. Appreciate it. Look at that butterfly. <laughs> Seriously, like how beautiful is that top? I don't know if some of you had a chance to see. I did, um, since I was on this morning, I did a um, I did a short and then I did a video and I just released the video uh, just a few minutes ago. And thank you for those of you that came in to watch it. So I'm going to be selling mostly these beautiful vintage clothes. Um, I am going to throw in some other vintage things here and there for those that are not interested just in vintage clothes. Um, I do have, you know, oh my gosh, I have, I have such an amazing, right now I have such an amazing amount of inventory of like really beautiful inventory. D. Hewitt, Massimo's going to fix it. He's at Home Depot getting the, the things to fix it. So he's confident that he can do it. Keep your fingers crossed that uh, it all goes well. He said it's, you know, he said it's no problem. He can take care of it. So he's going to do both of them. So, yes. So that will be fixed today, hopefully. If not tomorrow, it's fine. I have the, the clubhouse is literally like 30 seconds from the cottage and um, if I have to run down there, I will. So far, I haven't. So, which tells you I haven't drank a lot of water today, which is not good, you guys. Drink water. It's really, really important. Let's say a quick hello to our friends. Now, to listen. Now, tonight, this afternoon, I am going to move really, really quick um, on these items that I'm bringing um, and try to just blow through them as quickly as possible. So if you see something that you're interested in, like this, for example, bid quick, um, because I'm going to close them really quick. I'm going to go once, go on twice, fair warning, and it's going to be closed. Unless there's one bid on it, then I'm just going to, I'm just going to sell it. So if you think you might like it, just bid on it quick. All right. Um, Susie Q, I got that link that you sent me to the, um, I always say it wrong, Airbnb, Airbnb, I think it's called. Anyways, I looked at it. The cleaning on it was a um, hundred and I think $69 or something. And then there was also like this other like $54 charge. So it would have been cheaper. It will be cheaper to stay in a hotel, but thank you so much. And it was lovely. I loved it. She sent me a picture of this cute little, was it called butterfly cottage or something in the woods? It was awesome. I was like, Oh my God, this is great. But then when I looked into it, it would have been over $500 to stay there for two nights. So yeah, we decided, you know, not to do that. I talked to Chessie. Chessie's really excited. She thinks it's a fabulous idea. So hopefully I'll be able to pull it off. We'll see. We shall see. Amy, thanks for coming in. Hello, hello. Junebug, hello, honey. June, June, Junebug, do you ever do clothes? I don't know if you do clothes. You should probably try. Um, some, some old vintage clothes, they have a nice following. And the younger girls are really... Um, are really going after that stuff. They really like it. I'm going to let my daughters maybe go, maybe go through some of this stuff, whatever I don't bring today, right? We'll see what we bring. Hello, Mutton. Thank you for being in, coming in. Sandra, hello. Welcome back. Peggy, welcome back. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Christy, hello, hello. New England Thrifter, welcome back. Junebug's never done clothes. Ah, something you should think about maybe dabbling in. I used to do a lot of clothes. I did really well with clothes. Just made myself a delicious cup of coffee. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I hope you guys are having a nice afternoon cup of coffee with me or a cocktail. I don't know, whatever fancies you. Okay, so if there's anybody new in the background that's watching for the first time, I do have my registration form. It's not mine it's ours <laughs> t um registration form pulled up 
give her cottage cash for her birthday. Let her go shopping. <laughs> You're so funny, Susie Q, right? Yeah. These girls, when they come here, they leave with like bushels of stuff that they find. They're always, you've even probably heard them in the background. I've said, what are you doing? Shopping? <laughs> they shop in the cottage. Um Okay, so if you're watching in the background, please use the registration form. It's pinned at the top, and please include your city, state, zip code, and phone number. Let me know that you filled it out, and I will check the registration, and I'll give you a wrench, and the wrench gives you the ability to either buy it now or bid on something, depending on what we're selling. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. And if you're registered here with me, you're also registered with my auction partner, T Auctions for You. Uh, she, her link is listed down below. If you're watching this at a later date, you can still fill out the registration form. It's in my description. If you see something that was passed on or not purchased, you can contact me. My email and phone number is listed down below as well. Um, I sometimes will offer mystery lots. You can always ask me. I don't always um, make them available, but you can always email me and ask me if there's any mystery lots available. I usually do mystery lots. I think someone's at the door. Hold on one second. Can I have the door locked? That was amazing that I even heard that because my hearing is so bad. <laughs> it was my neighbor here at the cottage getting into their car and slamming their car door really loudly. <laughs> and you know me, I can never hear anything. So it's amazing that I even heard that. It sounded like a like a knock on the door. It was so loud. Anyways, um, so uh, as I was saying, I usually offer mystery lots when I have an abundance of stuff of like one type of thing um, that I can offer mystery lots for. So, all right, there's a 33 of you here. So that's actually good for you because it will give you a great upper hand on being able to get some really great deals. Okay, we're going to get right into it because I'm going to plan on staying on for about an hour and a half or two hours and then I have plans tonight. So um, as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to be heading out. So thanks, everyone, for coming in. Thank you so much. All right. So let's start with this. This is a vintage butterfly top. It's really beautiful. Um, it is 100% pure silk. The lining is rayon. And I took a quick look at it to make sure that nothing was wrong with it. And what do you say? What should we start the bidding on this? It's so pretty. Let me see if I put myself on. There you have it. Um, it says that it is a size, sometimes these are like one size fits all. It doesn't say what the size is on it. Okay, so let's, why don't we go ahead and start this at $5. $5 for the beautiful butterfly sequence top, if there's any interest in it. It's got the little points. It's really pretty. Is there any interest in this? I don't know if there's a lag. We'll give it a minute. Sandra Killian comes in at five. Jojo comes in at five also. Wow, no notification. Really, T? Hi, honey. Welcome in. T, let me know if you, uh, I know you're heading home. She just cleaned up from uh, the sale today. So let me know if you want me to send you the link if you want to come and hang out. I want to come in and say hello. 
Let's see. We've got Joyce at 15. All right. Love it. So beautiful. All right. 17 to Jojo, 20 to Joyce. I'm going to put it back here because I'm going to be um, kind of preparing the next one. Oops, sorry. Let me tighten up this tripod. And let's see if I can fix this. There. All right, Susie, thank you for saying out. Gorgeous for New Year's. Hello, Karen. Jojo is out. No, but let me share it out for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, Juice comes in at 20. All right, if everybody's done and done, we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. We're going to say fair warning. And let me grab my sticky note. We're going to be sold to juice for $20. All right. Awesome. Lot well, number one butterfly to juice. For twenty dollars. Okay, so I was kind of trying to think of the best way to de to treat these clothes, and I think what I'm gonna do is wrap them. Okay. I have um, a pile of tissue here, and I think I'm just going to um, wrap each one. And then just put your name on it. And put it in that bin. Okay, so we are going to do the same with this beauty. This one is similar. It says made in India, 100% silk, and this one is all in silver. Look at how amazing that is. Isn't it beautiful? Whoopsie. Oops, it's my daughter. Just a moment, you guys. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Okay. So I wanted to ask you for tomorrow for my birthday. Yes. Um, instead of doing like a dinner all together, do you want to maybe go for a brunch somewhere? Sure, I would love to do that. Do you want to do that instead? Like we can go to one of those fancy brunches that you and Daddy love. Sure. Sure, that sounds great. Okay, well, maybe. Instead of doing a dinner, like, I don't want to do a dinner. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. I would love that. Okay, text everybody in the family. Make sure everybody's on board. Oh, wait, Daddy has to work tomorrow. He does? Yes, he's trying to finish up Gina's house. Because he's been working. I don't think he can because he's been working at the car wash. Okay, talk to Daddy about it and make sure Massimo and Chesi are on board. I'm good with that. Okay, I think Massimo and Chesi will be fine with it. It just depends on Daddy at this point. All right, honey, I'm live, so I'll talk to you as soon as I'm done being live. All right. Okay. Did you did you guys win? Uh, we lost the first game, but we won the second. Okay, you didn't play, though, did you? No. No, you need to get clearance. We need to do that this week. 
All right. Bye. I love you. you. All right. Bye. Bye. She, uh, she wants to go for brunch tomorrow. Um, instead of going to, um, we were going to do dinner tomorrow night, but who's Donna speaking to Angelina. I was talking to my daughter. It's usually the only phone calls that I take. Hi, Heidi. Welcome in, honey. Um, so she, yeah, so she wants to, um, Jojo is out. Mutton is out. I wasn't paying attention. Let's see who else was in. I think that's, I think that's it. How come to you saying awful, um, to fancy what happened? What happened? What happened? Hi, Donnie. Welcome in. Sorry if I missed you guys. You take Massimo's phone call? I do. I take Massimo's. Well, that one night that he kept calling me over and over, <laughs> I kept sending it to uh, voicemail because he was annoying me because I, ever, I had given him an answer and it wasn't good enough. It doesn't say the size. Some of these tops, whoops, I'm looking to see if it says it inside and it doesn't. Let's just fix this a minute. Hold on, guys. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't say a size. Some of these tops usually only, you know, they're like one size fits all type of thing. So, um, I'm sorry, T. What did I miss? What's going on, T? Oh, maybe she's talking about her sale. Okay, we've got Juice at 25. Susie, she is feeling better. We just need to get clearance from the doctor. Hey, Tony Vlogs, welcome in. Casual Flipper, welcome in. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, it was awful for her. Too bad, right? I feel bad that it was awful. Two days of hard work. You know, you just, it's like hit or miss with those, you know, doing that. Oh, you guys, look at how beautiful this is. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It really, really is so beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm not just saying it because I want you to buy it. It really is beautiful. But then again, I'm very partial to bling bling. I love bling bling. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Oh my God. It's like on fire. The sparkles, the sequence on it. It's really nice. That is, that is beautiful. That is gorgeous. Isn't it, Tony? I just sold a gold one that was beautiful too, but I'm, I'm kind of partial to the silver, to be honest with you. Love the silver. Love it. Love it. Sparkly, right? Casual. <laughs> Look at casual. Sparkle. Hi, Karen. Welcome in, honey. Let's see. Joyce is out. Donnie's at 27. If everybody, hey, Bren, welcome in, honey. Okay, we're going to go once to Donnie. And we're going to go twice to Donnie. And we're going to put a fair warning on the board. And I'm going to put this down with the fair warning. And let me just make a tag for it. Number two is silver butterfly. It's going to Donnie for $27. And we're going to say it is sold, sold, sold.
All right, Donnie, congratulations. Beautiful. Okay. I love shiny things too, Bren. Love shiny things. Okay, let's do another shiny thing. This one says size small on it. My gosh, it's so beautiful. It's so eloquent. Hi, Gloria. Welcome in. From Chile, New York. Really? It's a cold. Look at this one. This one says it's named by, uh, name on it is Karina. 100% uh, pure silk. And it's a size small. And look at this. Look how beautiful. $5 start on this one, too. Oh, that gorgeous opalescence. It's stunning. All right. Let's put it up here. I'll put another one on a hanger. I'm going to do other, you know, other things besides just bling bling, you guys. I'm just going to grab from the top. There you have it. It's so pretty. Let's pull this out just a little bit. Angle it down just a little bit. Size small. Size small on that. $5 start. Fancy comes in at five. Oh, you found a 24 slot Cutco. Really? Do you know that I, I sold Cutco for like a minute when I was 19 years old? <laughs> You're so funny, Heidi. It is a little bit formal. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, right? None of us have any place to wear it. I'm actually, I am going to actually, I don't know if you guys watched the video, but there was one, it was a Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart, it was a bling bling top, and um, I love it, and I'm going to keep it for myself so I can wear it during, the, during our holiday shows. It's so pretty. I love it. I absolutely love it. Joyce is at 15. I mean, it's just beautiful. Even if you're invited over to, you know, someone's house for Thanksgiving or for Christmas to wear it with just like a pair of black slacks. Gosh, you could wear that with a pair of jeans, to be honest with you. With a pair of jeans, it would be beautiful. There's so much blue in there. Fancy is out. Joyce is at 15. And we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. It is everybody done and done. We're going to call this best. Okay, you guys, a fair warning. Oh, thanks, Gloria. Which one, honey? Which video? I don't know which video you're talking about. Thank you for the compliment. We're going to be sold, sold, sold to Juice for $15. All right. The woman in the beginning may be three minutes long. The woman in the beginning may be three minutes long. Which video is she talking about, you guys? I don't know which video she's talking about.
Okay. All right, next. Oh, let's do these jeans. These jeans are amazing. I showed these in my video. They're Ann Taylor. Here, let me put myself on. So they're Ann Taylor, and they are slim size six regular. But check these out. Look at these. Look at the bottom of them. I don't know if these were embellished, if they were made by someone. They're definitely boutique. And the bottoms of them are so cool. Look, you see them? Yep, they're awesome. These are really awesome. They're so unusual. So I'm going to put this on. And let me put them down on here. These are the legs. They belong in New York City, right? They're awesome. $5 start on these. For the jeans. They are so cool. Mutton comes in at five. Thank you, Mutton. Is there anybody else? If there's no one else, we're going to start closing it down. We're going to go once. Joyce is at seven. Mountain comes in at nine. Gloria is out. Sorry, honey, I didn't even see that you bid. You guys refresh. Refresh, refresh. Renee Flippin' Flamingos is in the house. Hello, Renee. Hope all is well. Joyce comes in at 12. Who's Tony saying, I love you too? Are you saying it to me? <laughs> Thank you. Mutton comes in at 14. So they, they kind of like made the bottom of them, I guess, flare out. And then they have this awesome, like, is that cheetah? He's spamming my chat. Is he? He doesn't usually, right? He is he is a YouTube content creator. Hey Mimi Resells. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Joyce comes in at 16. All right, if everybody else is done and out, we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. We're going to say a fair warning. Hi, Lisa. They are so cool. They are so cool. And we are going to be... Sold, sold, sold to Joyce, also known as Juice, for $16. Thank you, Juice. These are so awesome. I would definitely put cheetah in your keywords and boho. Okay. 
I sorry I'm taking a minute to do this, but I'd rather do it now instead of just throwing them in a bin next to me. So just refresh in between. All right. And in the bin it goes. All right. So the next one is going to be. Let's do these. You've got one and two. And these are those wool skirts. And here you have it. It says London made in Scotland, 100% pure wool. And you're going to get both skirts. There's that one. And then there's this one. Made in Scotland. Yep, they're kilts. Exactly. And I'll show them to you on camera. They're in perfect condition. All pleated on the bottom. So you get that blue one. You get both pieces in this lot and you get this one. Look at the beautiful pleats. Can you see the pleats? It's all pleated all the way around on the bottom. They're very pretty. Okay, who's going to start the bidding on the kilts? This is lot number five. Five dollars. I'm starting them at five dollars, Christopher. That's the start, honey. I think these are the real deal. No, I didn't mention I didn't mention it, Lisa. I don't even know if it's on here. Let's see. This says dry clean only. And it says something Scotland. Made in, made in Scotland. Then it, this must be the store that it came from in London. And then I don't see, I don't see a size, you guys. Oh, there's something else here. Here we go. Size 12. That one's a size 12, and this one, let's take a better look. This one is a size 6. Aren't they beautiful? They're so well made. This is quality, quality, quality stuff. Guys, it's beautiful. Very beautiful. That looks like it's hand, hand whip stitched. Where's that machine? Can't tell. No, maybe it's machine.
I'm going to take a minute and just raise my um, tripod a minute while you guys are bidding. Let's see if I can get a better view with it up a little bit. Sorry if I'm making you seasick. Yeah, what's better? Oops, okay. There we have it. Oops, and I just knocked into it. Hi, Daniel. Fancy is out. And we have Mr. Christopher at 30. Joyce says I'm out, but I love them. Christopher's at $30. And we are going to go once. And we're going to go twice. And fair warning. And we're going to be sold to I buy shit. $30. Congratulations, Christopher. All right. Thank you so much. All right, let me just wrap these up real quick. Just make a tag for it. Just be a moment. This goes. Okay. This is a Chico's a size two. I was actually going to try this on because I love it and it's so pretty, but I don't usually wear colors like this. But I absolutely love it. Let me show it to you. So this, when I put it on the table, you'll see it's a lot brighter than it's showing. Um, there it is. It's a Chico's. And it's a size. Size three or size two? Size two. Chico size two. This is the bottom of it. I'll show you the pattern up close. It buttons down the front so you could wear it probably open. Nice, big, loose, loose top. Doesn't feel like it's ever been dry cleaned or washed. And I'll put it on the table so you guys can really see the true color of it. Oh, it's got pockets on the side. See how bright it is? It's much brighter. This is, it's showing to be like a mustard. It's actually lighter than this, but darker than what it was showing on the camera. And here's the pockets. It's got two pockets. So it's kind of like a smock. It's, um, it's kind of like, I would call it like a sunshine yellow. It looks very like, it looks mustard on here, but it's not. $5 start on this Chico's. That's the style of it.
I'm sure you do, Christopher. I'm sure they love you. <laughs> it feels like it's probably either linen or cotton, and it does have a, um, it has a silver, let me show you. It has like a silver thread going through it. See it? That's actually like more true to color right there of what it is. Susan's at five. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, it's like a smock. It's really pretty. Let me see. I'm going to show you. Let's see if I can get. Yeah, see the color, how different it looks. It's a little bit brighter than this, but it's more this tone than it is the tone on the table. And it's pretty long and it has the pockets. Let me see what it says. Oh yeah, see it's it's um it's 93% linen. I I thought it was linen and then it's got some it's got 6 6% uh, nylon in it and then it has um a little bit of metallic. It feels like linen, you know, it's got that nice linen feeling about it. Okay, we've got fancy at seven. Oops. Oh, sorry, I gotta take this. Hi, this is Mrs. Bottolino. Um, I don't know who that is. Who are they here to visit? Massimo. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Massimo. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. Fancy's at seven. Susan, are you in or out? We're going to go once. Let us know if you're interested in going to nine. We're going to go twice. Susan, I'd rather not call it without a um, an out or a next bid from you, just in case. Fair warning. We'll give her one second. Just as a courtesy, I would do the same for you, Fancy, I promise. Susan is out. Awesome, Susan. Thank you. And thank you for bidding. Fancy. For $7. Okay. Oh, the boys are getting haircuts again. Didn't you just cut their hair like two weeks ago? Boy, they like to wear their hair short. All right, Nancy, congratulations, honey. Wait, let me see what else I can grab here. I'm going to go out into the living room. I'll be right back.
Okay, let's do this beautiful jacket next. This is a Chico's design and it is a size zero. Wait until you see how beautiful this is. I love the colors of it. Look at that. It's a size zero, Chico's design. It's got these kind of knot buttons with the loops on the side. And it has a beautiful red interior. And it's quilted. And it has pockets. And this is going to be a $5 start as well. Again, it doesn't feel like it's ever been washed or worn for that matter. Looks like maybe just the price tags are off of it. And it's got shades of green and burgundy and like a charcoal. Look at Susan at five. All right, let me put this up here on the board so you can see it. So it has buttons as well. It has buttons. Where's the buttonholes? Oh, so you can button it. You can button it and then you can loop it. You do both. So pretty for the fall and the holidays. It's a perfect jacket. Like if it's not so terribly, terribly cold outside, you can just like throw that on and run out the door with it. Susie's at seven. The fabric is really nice. It's, you know, kind of, th kind of thick, but not too thick like red and like dark orange and green. Susie comes in at 11. Joyce comes in at 14. Thank you, Daniel. Let's see, Jojo comes in at 20. Susie's out, thank you, sweetheart. Hi, Heather. I didn't even see you sneak in, honey. I'm sorry. I'm multitasking. Thank you for coming in. Joyce is out. Susan's out. We've got Jojo at 20. I think everybody's done and out at this point. So we're going to go once. And we're going to go twice and we're going to do a fair warning and we're going to be sold to Jojo. $20. All right.
No, I haven't, Daniel. I'll ship it out Monday. Did you need it? I put, I have it on the shelf. I was going to see if, if there was going to be some combined shipping if you bought something else over the weekend before I shipped it out. I hope that's okay. I hope you didn't need it for a birthday present or something. You guys, if you ever buy something from me and you need it for like a birthday present or a gift, please let me know. Because sometimes, you know, to save myself shipping, it's quite all right. Okay, thank you. You got me nervous. Always let me know, you guys, if you need it, like, stat. Otherwise, you know, something like a t-shirt, like, I'll put it on the shelf and see if something else comes along. Okay, this one is called Contessa. Contessa, it's large, pure silk. And it's silver and gold. And it's a large. Look at that. How beautiful is that? So pretty. Hello, buddies is in the house. Double T treasures, welcome in. Looks like a New Year's Eve blouse. Yeah, a lot of these blouses do. They're so beautiful. Jojo, let's see. Susie came in at five first. Jojo, you came in second. Joyce comes in at 10. It is beautiful, beautiful. It really is. It's a size large, yes. Donnie comes in at 12. Again, you guys, you could wear this with jeans. You could wear it with black pants. You could wear it with a black skirt. If you're a reseller, I mean, I don't know the Contessa name. I don't know if it's something that's sought after. I have no idea. Donnie comes in at 17. Thank you, Donnie. I'm going to go grab something else. I'm going to step away for just a minute. Trust me, if I was selling clothes on eBay, I would be selling all of this stuff right now. I would be listing. This would be like right up my alley when I would be listing. JoJo is out. Joyce is at 26. <laughs> Heidi, Heidi, you need to stay out of Walmart. <laughs> Target, here I come. <laughs> All right. <coughs> if everybody's done and done, we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. Donnie, did you say out? Yes, he did. Okay, got it. And we got a fair warning. And we are going to be sold, sold, sold to Joyce for $26. Thank you so much, Joyce. We're going to call this black and gold. All right, let me wrap this baby up and mark her. Lot number eight, 
to Joyce. $26. Congratulations, honey. All right. This you may have seen in my preview video. This is absolutely gorgeous. It is stunning. It's called a Helga. And let's see if it has, it doesn't have a um, size anywhere on it, you guys. Oh, wait, yes, it does. Hold on. It says dry clean only, which we know. No, nope, it just says dry clean only. Okay, it's beautiful. Look at this. Look at this. Holy cow. And there's the front. And you've got to see the buttons on it. Let's see if you can see them. They're faceted. Can you see the buttons? They're all faceted. Just these buttons are alone. Oh, and they're cold. They're cold buttons. They're not. These are not plastic. What could they be if they're cold? I don't know. And then I want to show you the bottom of it is like, I don't know if you can see it. It's like flared. So it's got like this little skirt on the bottom that's kind of like all gathered on the very bottom. Oh, you think they're glass? Ooh, probably. Isn't this amazing? This is an amazing piece, you guys. This is like a work of art. It's absolutely beautiful. Susie's at five. Yeah, she thinks they're gold. They're um, they're glass. They probably are glass. Courtney, you should see some of the blank shirts. I did a preview and I just sold like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them, maybe. Each one is even more beautiful than the other. I'm telling you, if I had an eBay lister, these would all be going on eBay. It doesn't have a size on it, Denise. So I, if I had to guess, I would say that this is a, a medium to a large. A medium to a large. It doesn't have um, a fabric content. It doesn't have a size. It only says made um, dry clean only. And then the name of it, which is Helga, Helga, H-E-L-G-A, Helga. And it's not cheap sequence, right? It's like you can tell by the quality of the sequence how beautiful it is. It doesn't say, honey. Daniel, it doesn't say. I would, I would show you if it said it. It just says that, and then it just says... Dry clean only. That's all it says. And it looks kind of orangey on the screen, but it is red. It's a beautiful red color. And I, I have to tell you that these buttons are absolutely amazing. They're all faceted. Let me see if I can show you up close. See them? Look at them. Yeah, see, now you can really appreciate the beauty of them when they're up. Look at that. It looks like a gem, doesn't it? Looks like a gem. Looks like you could wear that like on a ring. It's so beautiful. I'm telling you, just the buttons alone on this jacket are superstar status. It's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal piece. Very beautiful. I'm so excited to get this lot, you guys. So excited. All right, Susie's at 26. Like diamond cut. Yeah, they're faceted, like diamond cuts, double T's. Yeah, absolutely. 28 to Donnie. This is like, so 
my Susie's 30. So my sister-in-law, she collects clothes. So when they were looking for a house, they actually bought a house with a fourth bedroom so she could turn that bedroom into a walk-in closet. And she has her, she collects clothes. People collect clothes and she has like all these famous designer clothes they, they actually even have a separate insurance carrier on their house insurance just for the collection of clothes that she has. Some pocketbooks and some shoes as well, but mostly clothes and mostly vintage clothes. Beautiful, 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 amazing closet of just, it's like a museum. See, there's a collector for everything. Marsha's this and that comes in at 32. Thank you, Marsha. Donnie's out. Thank you, Donnie. Susie's out. We're going to start closing it to Marsha. As if everybody's done, we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. We're going to do a fair warning. We're going to close it to Marsha for this and that for $32. Thank you, Marsha. All right. Let's wrap this baby up. You guys take a moment to refresh. Make sure that you're on live chat. Marcia, you're going to love it. It's so beautiful. Marcia, are you keeping it for you or for resale? I'm curious. Courtney, if you're still here, will you share out my um, my video? Say that I'm doing vintage, vintage designer clothes. Would you do that for me, honey? Pretty please. Oh, me too, Marsha. I loved reselling. And you don't find this stuff in thrift stores, right? Very far and few between. When you do find them, you're like, oh my God, score. Did Courtney leave? Oh my God, Sharon. Don't anybody tell her. Don't anybody tell Sharon. She loves clothes. She loves selling clothes. Sharon, I've been doing clothes the whole time, like beautiful, beautiful stuff. I'm doing it as one-offs though, honey. Give kind of everybody a chance because not everybody has like really deep pockets, right? Okay, so this is a Chico's size two. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I'll show it to you. I love it. You take the bubble off. Look at this, you guys. Look at the front of it. Oh, isn't that so pretty? I love how feminine that looks. It has this beautiful waterfall in the front. And it looks so feminine. And so here's, um, it has a little bit of a silver gold, gold, gold sparkle. It's a Chico's and it's a size two. So that's a really good, good size. Oh, you did, Marsha. That's awesome. $5 start on this. It's so pretty. It's so feminine. 
I love it. And I love just the little bit of shimmer that it has to it. But of course, you know me, I love the bling bling and stuff. So let me put this up on the board. So you can see I'm trying to position it so you can really see how pretty the the waterfall effect is on the, the front lapels. The colors are fabulous. It's got like every color in it. It's got red, it's got orange, it's got green, it's got white. It doesn't have blue, so it's basically mostly all earth tones. Greens, red, oranges, yellows, a little bit of like maybe orangey yellow, and then the white, the creamy white. It is beautiful. Uh, Sharon, thank you, honey. Thank you for the super sticker. Yes, wear that to Thanksgiving for sure. It's so beautiful. All right, Susie's at 15. Fancy comes in at 17. Um, so it's a Chico size two. So someone correct me if I'm wrong because it's been a long time since I listed clothes. So Chico's size two is equivalent to like a medium large, right? Three is like a large to extra large. So I would say medium large. Chico's two is a large. Okay. Thank you, Ozma. Hello, Ozma. Hey, honey. Thanks for coming in. Lurking in the background. Or did you just get here? Did Courtney leave? Did she respond to my, my request? She must have left. Okay, zero equals a small, oh no, zero. Small is a one, medium is a two, large is a three, extra large is a four, and then there's two X. You just got here. Okay, Ozma, thanks, honey. Lot five, Chico's jacket. We have Susie at 21. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't, Ozma, for sure. KJ, can I wear this in the shower? No, you can't. All right, we're going to go once to Susie. We're going to go twice. We're going to say fair warning. And we're going to be sold to Susie D for $21. Oops. Mimi comes in at 23. Thank you, Mimi. Sorry, Susie. It's beautiful, Denise. If it was my size, I'd keep it. I need a three. I need a Chico's three. And Chico's three might even be... A little bit snug on me since I gained 23 COVID pounds. <laughs> 23 COVID pounds is what I gained when I went to the doctors last week. He's like, "Well, you're doing good." He said, "You're doing you're doing really good on on your weight loss." He says, "You've lost a pound since the last time you came." I'm like, "Are you being fresh?" He goes, "No." He's like. Anything is good. Even if it's just a pound, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Denise is out. Susie's going to get it for $25. Yeah, he was being fresh. I know he was. All right. We're going to go once. We're going to go twice. There's no other bids. We're going to sell it. Here's your final warning, guys. And bam, Susie gets it for 25 
All right. Thank you everyone for coming in. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to, Susie, wait until you feel how soft this is. I don't know what the, it says acrylic, metallic, and polyester, but my gosh, it feels like cashmere. It's so soft. Um, I don't think Chico's makes cashmere. I don't think I've ever seen anything um, that's cashmere from Chico's. Right, nice little bundle. I wish it came to you nice and neat like this, but you know how I squish my clothes. That's that. All right, here's my next one. It's for the it's for the guys. Um, so it's just a Sonoma brand. It's extra large, tall, and it does have the tag on it. But it has this patch. This is an embroidered patch. And I don't know what this is significant of. Does anybody know what that is? It's got that eagle on it. So it's just a nice weight polo with that eagle on it. And then this one is United States of America. And this is a patch as well. And this one is double XL also $5 for both of them. $5 start for both of them. Oh, that candle smells so good. They're nice, right, with these patches? The patches are so pretty. What's this patch stand for? Does anybody know? I don't know. I have no idea. Peggy comes in at 12. It's a, it's a, like a military thing, Denise. Is that what it is? That's what I was thinking. All right. Let's see. Donnie comes in at 14. Gloria's out. Peggy comes in at 16. Ladies, here's a chance to buy your husbands at something so that they don't get mad that you're always coming to the auction. <laughs> And great Christmas present, too. If you want me to send it in a separate package, so that way you can say to your husband, oh, look, something something arrived for you, something special. I will. I will do that, even if it doesn't make it to 30. <laughs> I'll pack it separately for you. <laughs> that way you can hand it to your husbands. <laughs> All right, Peggy's out. Donnie's going to be at 18. Thank you, Peggy. Casual says the size is... XXL on this one, and this one is XLT for tall. The motto purposed for the great, the first great seal of the United States. This one here is the first great seal of the United States. 
That one is, let's see if they're sewn on. They are, they're sewn on. They're not like just glued on. They're actually sewn on, which is really, really good, right? They're not gonna peel back and come off. Really pretty gray. And this is a, it's a very deep, almost like brick red. Donna, I don't have a husband. I am a husband. I was talking to the ladies in the chat. <laughs> Junebug is at 24. <laughs> uh, thanks, Denise. I thought it had something to do with um, military, but it's first great seal, I guess. All right, Junebug's at 24. Is everybody done and done? Casual flipper, let us know. We're going to go once to June. Casual. Waiting on you. We're going twice. And we're going to just say a fair warning. Casual says enjoy. Thank you. And the winner is our one and only June bug. For $24. How are you, Junebug? Hey, Shimon. Welcome in, honey. Good to see you. Sold, sold, sold to Junebug. Moving right along, you guys, right? It's going pretty smoothly. All right, let's wrap these babies up for Junebug. Yes, you do, darling. I'm only like just a few minutes down the road. I think you're up near where um, um, Camille lives. I think you're close to her area. I'm actually picking her up on Tuesday to try to close this big deal that I'm working on. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm a little bit nervous because it's a lot of stuff, you guys. I might have to go rent a mini storage. I don't know if I can do it. <clears throat> if I hadn't bought all this stuff yesterday, I may have had room. All right. I love this. This is something I would keep, but it's not my size. Wait until you see how beautiful this is. It's, I love it. It's uh, Chico's Platinum Denim is the name of it. Um, it's really what was that oh it looks like part of a hanger maybe there was a hanger inside of it um look at the color of this is this not beautiful honestly guys it's a size two if this was a size three it's a cross between like sergeant pepper and i don't know um I can't describe the color. It's a combination of like gold maybe and copper, I would say. And look at the buttons on it. The buttons are beautiful. Yes, it's a size two. And then it's got the pockets down here. It's got the pockets up there. And the inside's not lined. Yes, we ship to Canada. You just have to pay the shipping. Hey, Marcus, welcome in. Are you wrenched, Marcus? Mm, 
Marcus, you have to fill out the registration form on the top, honey. Give us all your information and I will ship it out the least expensive way. It's not shiny elephant skin. Yeah, fill it out, Marcus. Let's see, we've got Susie at 14. Let's put it on this other camera and see here. I'll show you the back, the back of it. It's denim. It's denim fabric, but it's this beautiful, like golden, I can't tell you how awesome this is. It's really that awesome. It's just beautiful. Um, let me put it here so you can kind of see. It's kind, it's kind of like a, like a golden, like copper color, maybe. I don't know what, what, what would you call that color? I don't, I wouldn't even know like how to describe it. If I was listing it, golden shimmer, brown with a golden shimmer. And it, it looks like it's, it looks like it's like hard, but you know what? It's not, it's, it's really soft. You can see it's, you know, it's cotton. It's a cotton. Um, let me see what the, the care tag says on it. It says, um, it says 90% cotton, right? Is that what it says? I can't see. Where's my glasses? Let me see if I hold it up to the screen, if you guys can see it. Eighty-eight percent cotton. No, ninety-eight percent cotton and two percent spandex. Yes. So it's cotton. It's a cotton jacket. It's made out of like it's real like denim jacket, but only it's it's a beautiful golden color, golden copper, right, Sandra? Looks like brown sugar. Ooh, look how pretty it is and it's shining so nice with that light. I love it. Oh, really? Well, you know what? I'm just, I'm taking, you know, maybe I'll call you. I don't know. Do you still have my phone number? Text me. I don't know if I still have your number in my phone, but I'm going to be going right by you. And then I got to go up to Sebastian. And um, I don't think I'm going to be taking anything home with me. I'm just going to close the deal. And then I'm going to send a truck up to go get it. All right. So we have Susie at 26. Gold lame. No. Well, it looks like lame. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It does look like gold lame, but it's not. It's cotton. So it's, it's a denim jacket. Yeah, it is. But you know what? That's, you know, that's part of the business. Like you guys, like, you know, the behind the scenes of getting like all this great stuff. Like it doesn't just UPS doesn't just pull up in front of the cottage and say, Oh, I think I'll drop this stuff off at Donna. I think that she'll like it. I have to like travel to find it. I think it's called champagne. Ooh, yes. Or brass, right, Mary? Yep. There's a lot of names that you could call it. Okay. Where are we at? Let's see. Susie's at 26. Okay. If everybody's done and done, we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. And we're going to do a fair warning. And we are going to be sold on this beauty to Susie. Susie, you keeping this? Or are you going to sell it? I want to know. I want to know what you're doing with that. You don't have to tell me if you don't want. I'm going to call this the golden denim. Let's go into Susie D for $26. Yes, you're keeping it. It's so pretty. That in the store, what would you say, guys? Like $200 in the store? <coughs> 
it's an um i have I, i'll be driving to go close this deal um i mapped it an hour and 50 minutes from here hour and 50 minutes up hour and 50 minutes back and then an hour and 50 minutes back again but i, I don't want to get a truck and drive it an hour and 50 minutes in case i decide not to buy it um i'd rather just go up with my car and look at it and pay it and then and then send a truck up to go get it because it, i'm gonna have to send a big truck to go get it susie says at least right wouldn't you say two hundred dollars at least i would say so chico's is so expensive but i love chico's clothes they're quality they're nice quality nice quality stuff all right, let me wrap this baby up. My God, Susie, you're going to love this. I love it. I wish it was one size bigger. I definitely would have kept it. Where am I going to wear it? But, you know, every once in a while, next weekend I'm going out with Dolores and um, our friend Kim. She's a uh, psychiatrist. So... She always, I love her to death, but I don't know, like maybe just because of the fact that she's a psychiatrist, you guys, like I always end up like crying <laughs> when I talk to her. She kind of like, I don't know, has a way of like asking questions that make me kind of open up. And I always have tears. when I'm with her. Do I feel like she's analyzing me? No, I feel like she loves me deeply and wants to make sure that I'm okay because she knows that I don't go and um, talk to anybody like besides you guys and like my two best friends. And you probably have heard me say it before that it's even hard to talk to um, my own husband, because, um, you know, we start talking and he gets emotional and I get emotional and then it's a spiraling, like it's hard to support one another. So it's as sad, as sad as it may sound, we, we really don't talk about our loss very often. Maybe someday we will right now we can't. So besides you guys and my good dear friends up North, and tea. And I did have some other good friends here on YouTube, but I don't talk to them anymore either. People start to shine their real colors and, you know, stuff happens. Anyways, so here is the tag on this one. Good luck reading it. It says extra large and it does have this attached to it. So that's inside the pocket of it because it's reversible and um it's got a beautiful asian pattern all over it let me get a hanger and it's a raspberry red always good to have always always good to have someone to talk to it helps the soul heal yeah i mean you know you know how close dolores and i are and almost every weekend, she's, you know, very sympathetic to what I've been through and would never hurt me, like would never, like she's, she's a saint. And, um, you know, almost every weekend when we're together, I cry <laughs> with Dolores. I cry a lot, you guys, just so that you know, I'm a crier. I am. So, okay, here it is. And um, I'm going to definitely say it's silk. And the color is a cranberry. And then the interior is black. And it has this beautiful pattern on it. This Asian pattern. And it feels like bada. Oh, my God. It's so soft. So, um, yeah. So this is the name that's inside. 
and it's new with tags so you know it's never been worn she probably bought it in the orient somewhere it's got these wonderful you know latch um pieces hi judy welcome in honey and i'll put it up on the board so you guys can really see it how beautiful it is And it looks very red, but it's more of a cranberry. And the inside is black, reversible. And it has pockets on both the inside and the out. So you're getting two jackets here in one. Oh, thanks, Susan. We here in Pennsylvania love. I'm really a good listener and have gone through so much in my life. I totally understand what you're saying. Thanks, Bren. I don't know what Macy's place is saying. Okay, so this is lot number 13. And it is the Chinese reversible. Okay, and we have, oh, thanks Junebug, honey. Thank you so much. Is this Chico's? No, uh-uh. It's not. We have Gloria at 15. Oh, the closure on the jacket that you're showing. Ah, okay. Let me see. What did you say it was called? Frog closure. Thank you. I didn't know that that's what it was. Size tag will be in one of the pockets. It doesn't. Let me see. Um, it's this. It's this pocket. And, oh, it's extra large, Ozma. I'm sorry, extra large right there. It's an extra large. Oh, okay. So it says on here, let's see what it says. I'll read it to you. Actually, maybe I'll hold it up close and you guys can read it. Since the days when the cargo laden caravans in their homeland, wait a minute, do we read it this way? Which way do we read it? Caravans in their homelands. Later the cities sheltered, piled the winding miles of the old Silk Road. Canton now knows as, flourished as a market center. Traders from India, Persia, and Arabia gather within its walls to barter for free silks delicate porcelains and flavorful teas. So in their homeland later, the city's sheltered port at the month of the Pearl River, Delta became the gateway for European sailors seeking to export China's abundant, abundant riches. Today, Canton Market brings you an array of quality offerings like those admired far and wide for centuries. That's what it says. Oh, and it says $250. Holy crap. What? Oh, my goodness. $250. And we've got Susan at 25. Did Susan, you need another zero there on the end, honey. <laughs> Susan, just put another zero. <laughs> All right. If there's no more interest, June bug, let us know, honey, if you're in or out. Gloria is out. Nice quality stuff, right, you guys? 
so many beautiful pieces. You can tell that this is like beautiful quality. Beautiful quality. HK 250, so I think it's their currency. Let me see. HK 250. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know what HK means. Never heard of it. Marsh has been this and that is at 30. Susan's at 35. It's Hong Kong. Yeah, this one, these pieces, a lot of them are from overseas. HK, Hong Kong, Susan. Why didn't we know that? Look at Judy knows, Hewitt knows. I didn't know. All right, Susan's at 35. We're going to go once. And let us know, Marsha, this and that. We're going to go twice. Did I get an out by Marsha? We're going to say fair warning. Am I lagging? Marsha's out. Awesome. Thank you, Marsha. And we're going to be sold, 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 sold to Susan yes, for 35. Thank you, Susan. Awesome, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Oh, you did say that? Hong Kong? Yeah. I didn't know. You guys tired of seeing clothes? Do you want me to show something else? What do you think? Yes or no? Let me know. I'll show some more clothes, but if you want to see, Susan, look at the pattern on it. You can see it with the light shining. See it? How beautiful it is. Look at that. And it's all silk. Yes, you're tired of seeing clothes. Is that what the yes means? Right, Susan? Spice it up, Donna, says Donnie. All right. This is not spicy enough, Donnie. I love this. Love it, love it, love it. And that's what the thumbnail said. Um, let's see. How about if we show this? This is, it's RMK and the sticker says made in Taiwan, Republic of China, right? So this is vintage. Thank you, Sandra. And look at how precious this is. And we're going to look at it together. I have not looked at it to see if there's any chips or dings on it. There are two birds. Here, I'll put it down so you can see how big it is. So it measures about nine inches and about six inches tall. 
is how big it is. And it's really dusty. You can see on the holly. And there's the first break. If you're keeping it for yourself, that's probably nothing that a little bit of... Um, but somebody might even buy that, you guys, even with that little break. You know how I always tell my stories. Somebody's grandmother gave this to them and it dropped and it and it fell. Just disclose that in your listing and they might be looking for it. You know, if this is uh, Taiwan, Republic of China, where else are they going to find it except for eBay? Let's see if it says anything else. And it definitely needs a bath. Let's see if there's any other breaks that we should look at. Right, some green paint. I, I think that's the only spot that I see. Everything else, the beaks, the tails, everything else looks really good on it. $5 start on the beautiful birds. Taiwan, Republic of China. I love it with the holly berry in his beak. How cute is that? It's adorable. Oops, sorry, hit the camera. The Dallas start. Might be snow on the leaf. No, I think it's chipped. I definitely feel like it's chipped. <coughs> Kathy, I counted out all the buttons that the ladies bought last night. You were the third person. I was going to send you an email. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let me go see how many are. So I filled the two orders. I filled Heather's and I filled Mary's orders. And then they each got 180 buttons from last night. That's how many they bought in the lots. 180. And I have, hey, Swamp, welcome in. So, and I have 168 left. I don't have another 180, but I do have 168. So if you want the 168, they sold for 130. They sold for 130 for 180. So I have 168. So do you want me, if, if you want them, it's up to you. If not, I'll you know, bring them back to auction with a craft lot or something. If you want them, I can take um, $15 off. Is that fair? And sell them to you for $115? Does that sound good? Does that sound fair? For 168 of them, of those beautiful buttons from last night. It's totally up to you, Kathy, if you want them. If you don't, no hard feelings. I can... Um, I can offer them up to anybody who wants them in the chat, or I'll just bring them back another time. But there's 168. And for those of you that were watching last night, it was the last lot that I did. And they're from France and Holland and Italy and Japan. There's so many beautiful ones. And June bug is at 10 for the birds. So you can let me know. If you want them, Kathy. You want them, honey? All right, awesome. I'm going to make that lot number 15 in case you do take notes. I know some, some of my customers do take notes. Um, and this is going to be Kathy. The buttons. And it's going to be $115 for 168 pieces. All right. Thank you. No, Judy. 
Judy, they sold last night. They were, you know, I don't know if you were here. Some of the cards had, they were beautiful. I mean, they were so beautiful. Some of the cards had like three. Some of the cards had like 10. Some of them were like tiny, tiny, tiny. Some, some on, some of them said they were, we couldn't figure out. We were thinking, um, we were thinking, oh, Ozma, you, you weren't here last night either. They were amazing. They were amazing. Um, I mean, I could show them to you, but I have none left. I mean, if you want to see them just to see them, I'll show them to you so you don't have to go back and watch the video. Um, some of them said they were made of pearl, not mother of pearl, pearl. Oh, you were sleeping. Yeah, they were, they're on vintage cards. Yes, you do. I, I have them right here on the shelf. No, nah, just curious. Yeah, no, they had, they were um, like, some were three, some were six, some were like 10 on vintage cards. Judy says, I would be interested if you come across any more. Yeah, they sold like so quick last night. They were beautiful. And it, I, I, I thought it was so relaxing and fun to look at them. Okay, let's go back to the birds. Um, June is at one, uh, yeah, 110. <laughs> Don't I wish? <laughs> June, can you add an extra one to that? No, I'm joking. <laughs> so there's uh, June is at 10. And who else bid on this? Kathy. Kathy, are you out on the bird, honey? That was like Judy, if I ever come across anymore. That was like a once in a lifetime, like such a find, such a find. It was such a find. You never come across buttons like this. Never, ever, ever have I ever seen buttons like this. They were amazing. I think they were. Kathy comes in at 12. Thank you, Kathy. She can have the birds out. Okay, June. <laughs> All right, June. So Kathy gets the birds as well. This is lot number 14 for you, Kathy. Kathy gets the birds for $12. Awesome. So now you have the buttons, the birds, and the salt and pepper shakers. And that makes me feel better to be able to ship out all that stuff, like all together. You had to be dramatic. <laughs> she can have the birds. Give her the birds. All right, I'm gonna bring these two little, um, oh my God, these little birds are so cute. Hold on a second, I'm not gonna bring those, but I'm gonna bring these. These two little lanterns. I don't know if they're actual lanterns. I guess we're gonna look at them and find out. And they're really kind of dusty. But if you watched my video, these were in my video. They look like they're real lanterns. They definitely, they have a place for a wick. There's one and two. Now let's see if these have a name on them. Oh yeah, I remember looking at these when I was at the estate sale. That's what it says on the bottom. I have no idea. It looks like part of the sticker is missing. So there's this cute little one. It does have some grazing and a lot of dirt. So there's that one. And then this one looks like it's got some paint default. It almost looks like somebody painted it. I don't know if somebody painted it or not. Let's see what this one says. Made in Hong Kong. It's made in Hong Kong. 
So let's do a $10 start on these two little, it's flashed with the red one. Look at how adorable. You see how tiny these are? They're so cute. And it definitely has a spot for a wick inside. And I'm sure they open up. Oh, and it even has, it has the wick inside of it. They've never been used. How precious are those? They're so precious, right? So I'm going to guess that this one's probably made in, in Japan and the other one is made in Hong Kong because it says Hong Kong right on it. I didn't take a good look at this to see if it said anything else on it. No, just that sticker. That's it. All right, guys, any interest in these? $10 start. They're in excellent condition. I don't see any chips except for that grazing. It means basically they sprayed it with red paint. The manufacturer sprayed it or the person who owned it sprayed it. Because this glass bottom does not look like it's sprayed. But this does look like it's sprayed. Because it's a little bit lumpy feeling. So I wonder if you I wonder if this was clear at one time and they painted it red to match the the beautiful red base could be i don't know no interest you guys on these lamps do you want me to put some more stuff on the table and make it a reseller lot what do you think i'm going to put some more stuff on yes okay Hey, CRR13, Richie, welcome to the channel. All right, let's put some more stuff. Vintage stuff, right, you guys? I'll do vintage stuff. So let's look and see if there's any chips on this. This is, what does that say? I don't know. I don't know how you would find out what the manufacturer is to this, but it's so precious. And I don't see any breaks or chips. Looks like it's in excellent condition. Little tiny bit of, of a chip right there, barely. Little yellow birds, so cute. It's tiny, you see how small it is? It's so precious. <clears throat> All right, then I have this. This is Japan on it. Little flowers. Little tiny little bud vase, it's very sweet. Someone's looking for this. Let's check the flowers and make sure that there's no breaks. That one looks good. That one looks good. You know, miraculously, because it is so delicate, <clears throat> so delicate. That's a good one. There's a geisha. 
with all these little glass. I imagine that this would be beautiful cleaned up. Let's see if it says anything on the bottom. It does. Let me see if I can see it with my eyeball here. I'll tell you what it says. It says... I can't read it. I can't even read it with my my loop. You guys will have to really take a good look at that and see what it says. Um, I'm going to start this lot at $30. And I'm going to just put some more stuff on the table. Look at how pretty. Do you think this is all glass, you guys? Look at how pretty these little these little flowers are. So pretty. Um, um, CCR, you need to register, though. Let me see. There's a registration form pinned to the top. And once you're registered, <coughs> excuse me, let me know that you're registered. And I'll give you a wrench like everybody else has a wrench in here. Make sure that you put city, state, and zip code on your registration. And let me know when it's done, and I'll go over and take a look at it, and I can give you... Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, let me go see. Okay, do you want us to call you CCR, or do you want to be called by your real name? You let us know. And I'll give you a wrench. Thank you. Your registration looks perfect. You guys, welcome in CCR. Cheryl. Okay, you guys, welcome in Cheryl. Some people don't like to be called by their first name, Cheryl. That's why I ask. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, look at how pretty. You think there's stones? I don't know, but I imagine it would be absolutely beautiful, all cleaned up. Okay. So you're going to get that in this reseller lot. This is going to be a reseller lot. And let me see what else. Now, I remember selling. I don't know. These are so dusty and I didn't clean them. And I'm sorry that I didn't clean them. I'm looking to see if they're marked. I sold a pair of these bluebirds when I had my eBay store. Um, they are so pretty. And this is something that people collect. And I'm looking to see if there's a marking because I don't remember. Does that say something right there? Let me see. No. Let me just look at this really close with the eyeball and see if I see anything, any markings on it. It is just beautiful. Hold on. I need to get a wipey and wipe this because it just does not do justice with all this dust on it. Bluebirds of happiness. Those are usually signed, right, Bren? Yeah, I sold a pair of these bluebirds for like really good money when I had my eBay store. I remember being shocked at how much they sold for or how much they were listed for. Look at how beautiful they are. Okay. I just cleaned them with the wipey. Look at, oh God, they're, they're beautiful. No chips, excellent condition. And the bottom of it is a heart. I don't see a signature anywhere. Oh, there it is, you guys. You see it? Found it. Found it. Found it. Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's see what it says. It says L E O. Okay, 1994. L O W O something. I knew it was going to be signed. Because I sold one of these. See, you guys will have to do the research. Leo Ward. Ah, thank you, Bren. Leo Ward, and it's 1994. Yep, Leo Ward. Beautiful. 
beautiful piece right here. All right, so you're gonna get those birds. So this is looking like a nice little reseller lot, don't you think? Daniel, are you happy? Oh, Daniel. Okay. This is, does anybody know what this is? It says Taiwan, U-O-G, Taiwan. And yes, it's a blue cardinal and I'm going to let it go because I have, I have two blue cardinals that I'm keeping, blue cardinals, red cardinals that I'm keeping for the cottage and I don't need any more. And this one appears to be in excellent, excellent condition. Is Schreiker here? Schreiker! Schreiker, you want to come in? I'll send you the link. You want to come in and say hello to everybody? This, this Cardinal looks like he's um, a little bit angry. I don't know with his open beak like that. Okay. So it's, it probably can turn into a trinket box, but right now it's a candle. Mm, and it smells really nice. It's a nice scented candle. And it looks like it's in great condition. Look at Shriker, everybody misses you. You can, but I'm all dirty and sweaty from being out at the auction all day. Who cares? Everybody just wants to say hi to you. We don't care about that. Here, let me send it to you so you can come in and say hello to everybody. Hold on, guys. Give me one second. Shriker's coming to visit. All right, I just sent it. All right. So let's see what else can we add. Where where at where are we with a bid? Juice is at 34. Okay. We're gonna keep going. I'm going to keep going. All right. How about this baby? Let's check and see if there's any boo-boos on it. This one is a Mallard Duck by Andrea. Six, seven, two, one. And it's made in Japan. And let's take a look at it. Shriker! Hey, buddy. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, tired. Good to see you. How'd you make out at the auction today? Not good. It was a bad day for me. Was it? Yeah. Did you sell or buy or both? Uh, I was just there to buy. Oh, you were just there to buy. Yeah. I don't I don't get to sell there very much. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so what did you buy? Did you buy anything good? Uh, not much of anything. Some Wii games. Oh, some Wii games. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the good ones. The sports resort. Okay. But otherwise a couple belt buckles and some hand tools, not much of anything though. No. Uh -huh. So it was a dud day. Yeah. But that's the way it goes. You know, you never can tell until you go. Right. So, so I, I got uh, turned on to this. I don't know if you watched or I know you've been busy, but so I got turned on to this, um, got turned on, doesn't really sound very proper or very ladylike. I'm sorry for lack of better words, but someone told me about this woman, this elderly woman who um, she moved here from uh, New York City years ago, and she had a beautiful antique shop in New York City. And she, um, 
she brought everything down here, kind of like T bringing everything from New York to South Carolina yep. in hopes that she would, you know, open up a shop down here. And then some stuff happened. Her husband got sick and now she's like up and up there in age yeah. and she's hired a woman to kind of liquidate the store. It's a huge storage unit. Um, I'm going to try to film there this week, but um, the stuff that she has, were you watching earlier with the mm -hmm. clothes? No. no. Oh, MG mm -hmm. like beautiful designer vintage clothing that she had in her, in her shop. And um, I bought six big bags of it. And then I bought a whole bunch of other stuff from her. Um, I'm buying all her jewelry. Well, that's good. I know. I'm buying all her jewelry. But I'm a little bit afraid because I have this huge deal on Tuesday, which is going to be a tremendous amount of money. I was actually thinking of like selling gift certificates, like pre-selling <laughs> them, because it's going to be a tremendous amount of money, like, to put out um it's a the, the these guys have heard me talk about it it's a 35 and t saw the pictures of it it's a 35 by 20 room completely stacked and filled with arts and crafts but arts and crafts that are like not like made arts and crafts this woman used sure. to travel she used to travel like around the country and she'd go to craft shows and she would sell the craft items that people would buy to make crafts. Like that's what her booth was. It was like, you know, boxes and bins of ribbons and, right. yeah. you know, all that crafting stuff. So I'm doing that Tuesday. <clears throat> well, don't overextend yourself, you know. If I mean, and you've done well with crafts, obviously. But. I've done very well with crafts. With yeah. this, so this is why I'm like, you know, selling like a lunatic right now because I'm trying to get some capital up. That's yeah. you know, re really hard to get the working capital. All right, I'm gonna put this back on, and these came from um, an estate sale that I went to this week. Um, I did a little video. So look at this mallard duck. Isn't it cute? So this is going to be, a, I started off with these two sweet little lanterns, but didn't get a bid. So I started adding to it. Of course. And, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. So look at this. This is, this is a really beautiful piece. I love yeah, this. I see those sometimes, sometimes in red and sometimes in other colors. Yeah. Yeah. So I awesome. love birds. And then look at, this is so precious. Also it's so petite and so pretty. Hi, Leslie. Welcome in. Yeah, Mary, they're supplies. They're crafting supplies. I don't know if they're stamps. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's there. All I saw was um, boxes. Boxes and boxes and boxes. And some pictures of some stuff. Okay, here's another beautiful bird. This one is Lefton. Made in Taiwan. Look at this baby. And and Leslie is good to go. Good to bid. Um, Susie's in for 60. Okay, hold on a second. Um who's who's good to bid? Leslie Hall. Leslie Hall. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for checking for me. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Welcome in, honey. Everybody, welcome, Leslie, and behave yourself. Don't be out of line. Look at the painting on this. So this is left in. Robert! Hello, zombie bargain hunter. I hear zombies been selling a lot of plush lately. Yep, that's what he does. That's his gig. That was my gig, too. So it looks Hi, like Mary. Looks like it's numbered. Okay, do you so still have a big truckload there? Oh, um, plush. Do I? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But the last few loads of the last few plush lots that I sold, I really didn't get any bids on them. So you know, you don't. Not everybody's a plush seller. So I kind of like you know, wait until the people that are plush sellers you know, give them an opportunity to sell their plush before they, you know, they bid again. So that's why, you know, I'll show something else. 
This is turning out to be a really beautiful lot, right? Well, I hope they have it all listed now. <clears throat> this is the time to be selling it. Okay, here's another beautiful piece with a peacock on it. Wood and Sons, England. Let's just say you on. You on. You on. Looks like you on. And it's an excellent condition. Is that a peacock? Yeah. Looks like a little bit of wear right there on the um. Hi, Christine Rose. Welcome in, honey. Good to see you. Hope you're well. I get well, that's where it would happen if people use it. It would be right there. Yep. And, and on the other spout, right there on the other end, too. <laughs> there's no um, there's no chips. Just a little bit of the paint, but very, very... Hi, Harley Kitten. So... Yep, so that's going to go in with that. Susie's got the bid at 60. Yep. Scarborough, the fair. 24 karat gold plated base carousel. That's not a uh, musical one? No. Hi, Harley. Thank you. Told you everybody misses you. Yeah, well, I've been around, just not a lot. Okay. And that's going to go there. <clears throat> oh, it does, it does move, so it must play some music then. No, it doesn't. It does. it just, mm -mm, I think it just needs to be tightened up. No, there's no music. Just needs to be tightened up. It's really pretty with all those gems. All right, guys, I think that's it. I think that's all of it. That's a nice big reseller lot. Lots of really beautiful. Just checked my eBay store on mobile app. The update that they did today changed all my listings to three-day shipping, no returns. PayPal payments only, extra, all messed up. Oh, no. Now, Christopher, is that just on the app, or does it look the same way on a desktop? As I did hear something about that a couple days ago. Someone was complaining about that that all of a sudden they only take PayPal. <laughs> I thought they stopped taking PayPal. They did. Well, you can still, it, there, it's still part of the payment system, but not PayPal only, of course. I still pay with every, everything with PayPal through eBay. Hello, Susan. Sixty-four people. Have you all hit the thumbs up? All right, we're gonna start calling it down. Hi, Joanne. Am I back? Well, I'm here for the moment. It's just visiting. Saw me feeling all by myself over here, and said, "Well, let me go in and harass her." <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't harass me. Well, you were on this morning, weren't you? I was on this morning. I did, um, I've been a YouTube fool. I, uh, so I was on this morning. I posted on Instagram. I did a YouTube, um, I did a YouTube, um, shorts. Then I did, a, a YouTube preview of the auction, uploaded that as a premiere. I'm going to bring you in uploaded that as a premiere and then i went live again tonight and i got shipping done 
So you really missed YouTube the last few days with no internet. <laughs> I did my nails. Right. I refused to work. I could have packed things and wrapped them in, you know, bubble wrap and tissue. But I was just like, nope, I have no internet. I'm not working. So I went into Mr. Buys a lot and hung out in there for a while. And then I did my nails and I um, I did some housework here. I unpacked some boxes. I kind of needed a down day anyways. Yeah. You know, I never like take a down day. So you don't have a Bluetooth uh, printer then? I do. So you, uh, as far as for your labels? I do. And you couldn't do it through your phone? I didn't right. want to. Right. <laughs> I understand. I have a hotspot on my phone. Right. So I could have linked my laptop to my hotspot and I could have linked my printer to the, well, I wouldn't have had to, I've got my printer is hooked right into my computer, right? you know, my laptop that I bought. So all I'd have to do is just get the hotspot out of my phone and I would have been able to print labels and mm -hmm. do all that. And I said, Nope, not doing it. Take so do they give you an explanation on the outage? No, no, they don't care. No. Nope. No, nope, but that's like twice in a month that it's gone down. It goes down here, like on the average, since I since I bought the place, I've had I've lost internet like once a month. It's crazy. Yep. Oh, Marilyn says Shriker, good to hear your voice and see your face. I've missed you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll stop by once in a while. Joyce says, sorry, forgot to say out. Oh, that's okay. So we're counting it down to Susie. We're going to go once. Do you want to do it or should I do it? No, you're you're the moderator. I'm just a visitor. We're going to go twice. We're going to do a fair warning. Anybody? Is everybody done and done? Done and done and done? Oops. That's the link to get into the stream yard. Don't want to post that. I mean, I have before. It doesn't really matter. Hi, Junebug. Now, did Junebug go back to Junebug? Didn't she switch to June for a while yeah. and then back to Junebug? She did. she did, and we all told her that we missed it. Uh, I see. Susie. Susie gets it for 60 Susie, that's a great deal, honey. That's a lot of stuff. You did good, mama. You did awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's going to take you a while to pack all that fragile. Oh, my gosh. You should have seen last week, Peggy Gilmore bought so many, like, really, really fragile glasses. Like, there's there were these Rosenthal glasses that were super, super thin. Hi, Susan. And, um... She said this morning that everything arrived, you know, in good shape. Thank oh, goodness. Good, good. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't Peggy. It was. Uh, it was uh, Joyce. It was Juice. Was it Juice? I can't remember. Oh my god, I'm losing it. Hold on, I do have to be careful with these. So I had to like. I had to like when, so you guys don't see, like sometimes I want to do like the behind the scenes of like buying at estate sales. I had to pack, I had to wrap and pack each and every one of these things when I went to the estate sale and then bring them back here and then unpack them. Now present them. And unpack now them I again. Yes. Them. <laughs> do you know how many times I handle product like before? Yeah, I know. So, you know, so I, I know some of you probably look at my sales and they're like, wow, she got that for that. But like, you don't know all of the steps that I have to take to get that stuff and to bring that stuff. The life of a reseller. Yeah, it's the life of a reseller. Yep. Okay, I need to write this down. Hold on a minute. Yes, I was offered a, a book estate today that... I've pretty much turned down. I'm just so tired of hauling around boxes and boxes of books. And, no, that's it. You know, I'm just kind of trying to ease my way out of the, the book business. Well, not entirely, but 
you know, I, I need to get back to just, uh, you know, picking the high spots and leaving the rest. And I've been doing it for 20 years and I'm just worn out. And of course, most everyone's library is in the basement, which is, you know, makes everything twice as hard. Oh my gosh. So yeah. hard. So I'm going to show some of these books since you're here. I got all of these like awesome old books. Maybe you can uh, shed them. Now, light old up. doesn't make them awesome, you know. Well, yeah, I know. Old is not necessarily better or good. It's just old. That's the mis one of the main misconceptions of book book lovers and book collectors and booksellers. Old does not make something good. It wow. can sometimes make them more interesting, but not necessarily good. Well, I, you know, I don't really know how to like look at the dates or, you know, like, yeah. like publication. And it, it can be hard, you know, with older books as well. Most of the time, you're never going to know the exact year they were printed. You know, you can have a good idea. But hi, Jules. Because they weren't very up on, you know, putting a printing date on most things, you know, 50, 100 years ago. So I'm going to do these, and I think some of them are, the, the binding on these are not in great, great condition, but I'm going to put them on the table, and, and we'll look at them together. Let me just get rid of, actually, I might leave that tissue down there in case some of these flake off. Um, so the first one is this Raggedy Ann and Andy, a thank you, please, and I love you book. Oops, I gotta plug in my phone. So, but just so that you know, like you see, I mean, they're not in perfect condition. They're they're old. These are old books. But I I don't know. I looked at these and I thought, I wonder if people that sell ephemera would be able to like sell these like. It would be a shame to rip the book apart, but look at what an awesome piece of ephemera that would be. Yeah. Yeah, Jules, I think she already did all the clothing. Um, not even close to all the Oh, uh, from your preview? Did you do all the ones from the preview? No. No? Okay. No, and um, Donnie told me I had to um, make it more interesting or something <laughs> like that. I said, all right, I'll sell something else. <laughs> <laughs> getting tired of the clothes but don't you agree that that would be like a really awesome piece of ephemera uh i don't know i mean the raggedy Ann has been printed so many times and there's so much of it out there that i mean if you're a lover of you know the ann and andy then it might be interesting to to frame something like that but i mean th they've been printed millions and millions of times so generally somebody's just gonna you know collect the books and I don't know or, that anybody or, would rip them or, out and or do buy that. it because it reminds them of like growing up, growing up. Right, right. Nineteen seventy-one. Yeah, and see, this one's not even very old. So, well, fifty years, but fifty years old for this series, it's not very old. Mm -hmm. Songs to sing with very young, and it has a name up here on the top. Yeah, this looks a little bit older now. It's random. If you find a favorite song in there, you know, you might take a page out from 66. Yeah, a little bit older. 1966. So is it all a music book? So sweet. Hickory Dickory Dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock was struck one. The mouse ran down. Hickory Dickory Dock. You're not very old, Ozma. Don't worry. Pop goes the weasel. This is so cute. Do you, you recognize all the songs? Oh, I didn't look at them all. So this one has some damage on it. Right there. You know, the cover's missing on it. Baby's Mother Goose. The sweet little kitten i know i don't like cats but i do think that they're 
Kimberly Ann Shepley, first birthday, April 9th, 1967, Mummy and Daddy. She kept these for a long time. I think the pictures are great. I love the illustrations in these. Look at that. That is such a great illustration. Yeah, and Jill, you know, brought up an idea. You know, you could do something in a baby's room and yeah. make wallpaper out of them even if you needed to. I think that these would be great for people that do junk journaling for sure. I would advertise these for junk journaling, these pages, if I was a reseller. Look at this one. That's precious. Yeah, the Muffet. Yeah. Little Miss Muffet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so Marilyn, uh, you're right. Any, anything can be turned into a, a, a job if you have enough of it. And uh, sports cards, definitely. You usually have to go through hundreds of thousands of those to, Look whenever you see a collection. Oh my gosh, look at her little dress. It's so cute. These are adorable. <laughs> Mutton Ridge. Didn't like being Andy. Little Bo Peep. Look at little Bo Peep, how cute she is. Where's her sheep? She's crying. <clears throat> my parents didn't buy us book like, books like this. They couldn't read to us. Hmm. Besides, I was a baby when these probably these books came out. And I, I remember Peter Pan pretty well. Probably still living in Italy. As, I was going to say, all these stories should have been in Italian as well. No, we had double Gigi. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this one doesn't look like it's that old, this Peter Pan. It looks newer. Let's see what it says. 22nd printing 1969 so it's not really that that's the year i came to the united states wow this is in really great condition for being 1969 don't you agree looks a lot newer than that and these are golden books look it says a big golden book another uh, golden book, the little red caboose. Yeah, that's one I remember pretty well. Yep. This one, the binding is coming apart, you see? So it's definitely not, it's been loved. Yeah, children got to read it, which is nice. Trucks, Trucks, Trucks by Peter Lippman. Those were the alligators, aren't they? And this one is 84. Yeah, 84. Not too old. But it is a first edition, it says. Is it a first edition? Let's see. Show us how, how you tell. Oh, that one says it, so that one's pretty easy. And it doesn't have a second date or anything, it just has the one date. First edition. Yeah. Now if it had another, you know, another copyright 89 or 92 or something, then it wouldn't be, but is anybody interested in this um, in this lot, guys? Do you want to a large it? stack? Santa bears. Uh, not just for reindeers now. Printed in Singapore. This, page from, is and this is from the eighties, probably. Here we go. Yep, 89. Oh, Heather, you start it wherever you want. Books are a little easier to ship with uh, media mail, so Mary's in for 10. Dinosaurs were pretty popular when I was growing up, and I think they still are. Heather's in for 20. 
This one doesn't say a copyright on it. Oh, maybe down here. Yeah, fifth printing. Mm -hmm. So sometime in the 80s, probably, late where 80s. It, where does it say fifth printing? What's that five in the number line there? That's a fifth printing. Number five, where do you see number five? And then bottom line there, 1098765, the very bottom line. 1098765. So what does that mean? That means it's a fifth printing. If it went all the way down 4321, if it had the one, it would be a first printing, meaning the first edition generally. So what does 1098 mean? Nothing. That, that They're just leaving extra numbers there. So every time it gets reprinted, they'll take one number away. Take away the five, take away the six, take away the seven. So you go, time by, it gets you go by the last number on there? Yeah, the lowest number there. That's weird. Creepy crawlies. Uh, Mary's in for 26. Creepy crawlies, but they're showing fish. What do those letters mean on the bottom? Uh, with the A there, it's probably a first printing from 1985. That, some some publishers use letters, some use numbers. So you think this A would a still be like the number one? And this one is a Scholastics. So this is definitely newer. Hi, Heather. This one doesn't have. That's the revised edition. So probably from the 90s or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Yeah, Jules, that's been my main business for 20 years is books. Eight. I nine, used to only be books until, you know, maybe five or six years ago. Ten. I mean, if you're a reseller, I would put vintage childhood books in your title because somebody who may have had this book as a little girl you know, and now has babies, you know, she may want to buy this, you know, to read to her own children if like her grandmother read it to her. So I definitely would put like vintage childhood um, in your title, you know, your keywords. Yeah, and use okay. every digit you can in your titles. That's a big key right there. Don't just put the title and the author and leave it at that, you know, fill up that entire line you can with keywords. Oh, see what Fancy wrote? She wrote, I'm getting so nostalgic. I love sitting for hours and looking at books as a kid. So meaning books that she had as a kid. That's right. Yeah, just, that's exactly what I just said, Fancy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I bet people like in our generation or if they have grandchildren now, they would be looking for books like this, like these old books that they had when they were children. Well, that's how most collectibles are sold, you know, and that people are looking for what they knew when they were growing up. Right. All right. We've got Heather for a high bid of 28. Is there anybody else? Or should we start closing it? I think Mary was the other participant and she said out. Yep. She said out. I used to read to the other little kids at daycare. The staff loved it. That's awesome. Oh, yes, for sure. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go once. We're going to go twice. We're going to do a fair warning. If anybody else is interested. Otherwise, we're going to be sold. Sold, sold, sold. To Heather Very B. Good. $28. Thank and you. I know you like taking a break from shipping those big bulky items to shipping a box of books, do you not? Right. Heather, 
Heather B. $28. Now, when you ship books, do you do them like you do records or do you find a box for them? Mm, sometimes I, it depends. Now, since these are so fragile, you know, and they're, they're, they've got like some issues down there, <clears throat> excuse me, in the spines, I will uh, definitely box these up because I don't want them to uh, get any more damage than they, than they already are. Right. But the, when the, the newer books, I just wrap them in um, bubble wrap. And then I put a piece of cardboard on them and wrap them in a piece of cardboard or just cardboard on the top and bottom. And then I, I wrap it in my signature trash bag. Which, you know, I'm, I'm still even, so I'm shipping more um, UPS these days. And yeah, I think that's a smart move. Yeah, and I'm kind of um, doing my shipping. Well, I'm doing a little bit of shipping every day, but I'm doing like two days of my big shipping and kind of like waiting for people to maybe buy a few things from me so that I can bundle it all up together. And I'm still... Um, I'm still, um, you know, wrapping, I'm still wrapping, um, my UPS orders in trash bags because I just don't want, um, you know, I, I'm so afraid of like damage from the, from the weather. Tam and Belle Sal, hello from Scotland. Welcome in. Thanks for joining us. I will ship to Scotland if you see something you like. You just need to fill out a registration form and you will be responsible for the shipping. But thank you for coming in. And just be sure to subscribe and you guys don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the bell notification. All right, I have another great lot here of books I'm gonna show since I've got Stryker here and he knows so much about it. You guys okay with me showing more old books? Okay, so these are from the Dandelion Library. Do you know anything about them? Uh, I know the name, yes. Probably mainly in the 70s and 80s, so not significantly, significantly old. Let's see. 1937. Yeah, that's when it was originally printed. This book isn't from 37, though. It's not? No. So how come it doesn't have when it was printed? It just says 1937 on it. Well, no. a lot of publishers just don't uh, update I mean, that type of information. It looks pretty old, Trike. Are you? I don't want to say you should. Now, is that? Yeah, it's a, it's a double-sided book. Turn it over. You have a different story in the back. Yeah. It is. There's two, there's this story and there's this story. That's so cool, right? Yeah, part, and these are in excellent, excellent condition. Okay, so there's that one. Ooh, look at this one, you guys. It's Beatrix Potter. And that's what the second story was in the back as well. It was a, a Potter. Oh, it was. Oh, it is a Beatrix Potter. Huh. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. These are in excellent condition. Yeah, <laughs> Grawler hasn't been around for quite a while, so. This one doesn't you know, even have a It could on. be 50s or 60s in there somewhere. You think so? And those are library bindings, so it's a little bit harder to tell age on them. But Yeah, these are beautiful, and they're in excellent condition. Let's see what this one says. Yeah, it's still, uh, see, there's been renewed at 61, so. 
copyright. The other, yeah, the other one as well in the 60s. 60s. Yeah. But Beatrix Potter is always a, a, a nice read. Oh, look at this one. And the, you guys, the condition of these are, look at the condition, right? They're great for being as old as they are. Let's see what this one says. You think these are library books? Yeah, they're especially uh, bound for libraries, so they they would hold up better. Fifty-seven, so somewhere in the fifties and sixties. So we've got Peter Pan on this side, which is. A really awesome picture of Peter Pan. Look at Tinkerbell. The mad Tinkerbell. <laughs> A mad Tinkerbell. I've uh, never seen Tinkerbell mad. Yeah, a little bit older. And Alice in Wonderland. Oh, these books are beautiful. What a beautiful collection this is. Okay, so this one is the only one that's missing the binding here. All the other ones are intact. A treasure of nursery rhymes. Let's see what this one says. This one says 1967. Hold on, I can't open this page. Okay. And then it says, it says 1967 on that one. I mean, they're still old. Oh my gosh, and they're all the nursery rhymes. Love this book. I don't know, do parents, do parents even teach their kids nursery rhymes anymore? I know I really didn't, to be honest with you guys. Tom Thumb and other favorites. I don't know. I've given away box loads of uh, children's books whenever a friend or somebody has had, you know, newborns. And so I think that probably helps if they have them handy. Maybe not if you have to go out and buy them yourself. Maybe not as much, but. Look <laughs> at Tom. This is a strange clothing lot. You can talk to Donnie about that, Tom. Donnie, where are you? He hasn't said a word since I started showing. He's like, go show something else besides clothes. <laughs> I'm trying to stay in the vintage theme. I really am. But Tom, no, not Tom, Tam. Tam and Balsal. Tam, you're right. <laughs> I was showing clothes. I got bullied out of not showing them anymore. No, I'm joking. I didn't get bullied. This one is 1967. Beauty and the Beast, The Hind in the Wood. I don't know that one. The Frog Prince and Goody Two Shoes. I don't know that one either. I don't know this nurse. I don't know this um, fable. Yeah, 1960s. Do you know it? There's Donnie. I'm reading these old nursery rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie. Donnie, you're getting me in trouble in the chat because my thumbnail says close. And now I'm showing like other stuff. Okay, and then the next one is a, a Child's Garden of Verses. I love how there's two, you flip it upside down and there's two, um, and there's two stories. Yeah, that was popular in the 60s. A few publishers did it. I love that. And you guys, they have that, I don't know if, if it, some of you may like that smell, but they have that kind of awesome old book smell. You know what I'm talking about, Schreiker? Oh, yes. It's They smell so good. Yeah, there's a few different ones. One, a few of them aren't good ones, depending on which one you're smelling. But uh, decaying old, old paperbacks are the best, vintage paperbacks. That's no. a great smell. This now, a lot of people mix that up with 
uh, a musty odor that was because you know they were kept in a garage or a basement or something. No, these are not musty at all. This has got like that kind of like old library book smell. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, oh, they smell yeah. so good. Darling Cook, thank you so much for joining membership. Really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you'd like to bid, please follow the registration link at the top of the page. And let me know when you register. It doesn't cost anything to register. And if you see something, um, I'll give you a wrench once you're registered. Uh, do a lot of doll clothes and you will be true to the thumbnail. <laughs> They should bottle the, the old book smell, says Tam. Oh, my gosh, Tam. These smell amazing. Okay, so here's Adventures of Robin Hood. And this one is... Let's see... 1953 or later? Probably a little later. Probably like the other ones, mid sixties or so. Right. This is awesome. Great illustrations in them. And then ah, Pinocchio. I love Pinocchio. This one's got the binding is is has disconnected a little bit off of there. Oh, this is great. I love this one. This one says 1946 on it. Now, that's a story that my parents used to tell us when we were little. Maybe because Pinocchio was uh, Italian. It was an Italian fable. Yeah. That yeah. Would be they, used to, they used to tell us the story of Pinocchio when I was Italian. I mean, when I was Italian, when I was little. <laughs> this is great. Oh my gosh, I almost like want to sit down and read it. See if my parents were telling us the truth. <laughs> well, you may have some time later tonight between, you know, 2 and 5 a.m. Yeah, right. <laughs> I am not going to have time later. Okay, so that's um, that's Pinocchio. That one got me a little bit excited, I have to admit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. Krubloff, the mouse who wanted to play the what? Balelica. Balelica? What in the world? What is that? Uh, some sort of little guitar-looking thing. Never even heard of that. Maybe like a ukulele? Hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. I'm assuming it's probably an old Russian story. I don't know. Looks like a Russian word. Petunia, I love you. I don't know that one either. I don't know that. Never thing. heard of that one either. No. You haven't either? I haven't. No. No. Uncle Wiggly the book. The Uncle Wiggly book. The Rabbit Gentleman's Adventure Adventures. I have never heard of this fable either. This is pencil, so that could be erased. Well, that's part of the charm if you're looking at children's books, having uh, some penciled in. So this one says 1927, copyright 1955. Keep going. 1961. There you go. So you always got to read all the dates and you know, it's not any earlier than 61. So, so it could be 61, right? It could be 61. It's, it, it may very well be, but some, sometime in the sixties. And then on the back stories around the year. Yeah, but that's by uh, Thornton Burgess. So that's a very good, uh, <clears throat> good stories there too. Oh yeah. See how he knows his stuff. Look at Thornton. Burgess, stories around the world. Oh, you saw it in the front page. Peggy's in for 34. <coughs> Excuse me. Thornton Burgess. Okay, now this one is... Back to Babar. Isn't it where we started with, with a Babar? No, this is another one. 
I mean, though, that we started with a book, another Babar book. Wait a minute. Is this the same one? Yeah, no, I think this is a different one. And then the tale of Benjamin Bunny. Oh, no, Beatrix Potter. Let me see if there's another one at the bottom of that pile. We'll go through them in a minute. And then here's, I. that might be in, I don't know. We'll see if there's two. Anderson's of Fairy Tales. This one looks like it could be old. Probably about the same time, but. Yeah. 1958. It doesn't give any other dates. This one's in excellent condition. This one smells amazing also. And then on the back, Johnny Crown's Garden by Leslie Brooke. Any idea? Johnny Crow's. Oh, you're muted. Um, I've never I've never heard of that one before. Yeah, me neither. But look at this one. We've all heard of this one. Bambi's yep. children. What? Yeah. Well, you know, they had to build on the success of Bambi, so they had to keep writing. Bambi had kids. I wonder how many things we all do while watching Donna's auctions. <laughs> Are you bored, <laughs> honey? I'm sorry. <laughs> I love looking at this stuff. That's why sometimes I like coming on, you know, at night by myself just to really enjoy and look at the stuff. I've got a whole box of of um, postcards that we need to look at one of these nights. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few boxes of those laying around as well. No, you should show some too, Shriker. Why don't you do that? Uh, maybe someday. Okay, so this one is 52 1960 and for Don Leverson this doesn't have all the beautiful colors like some of the other ones do and then here's the Bambi side too bad it doesn't have all the beautiful colors like some of the other ones. Okay, let's count them down and see what I have here. First, I'll give you a peek at the binding so that you can see what all of the bindings look like. So the only one that's really messed up is this one. The rest of them all look like they're in really, really good condition. Yeah, it would be a nice little library for someone. Daniel says, Schweiker, hello. We missed you, sir. Yep. Okay, so. Peggy's in for 38. So I'm going to go through them now. We're going to do one. We'll tell you oh, something. Heather was 40. Now Peggy's at 42. We've got one, two, three. Ozma thought Bambi was a boy. I have no idea. Well, regardless, they can, you know, Bambi can still have children. Four, five, six, seven, eight. You're freezing up there, it looks like. Nine. My, yeah, my internet signal's up. Is that a, is that a rat? Uh, a mouse, and uh, not sure what the uh, that one is. A squirrel? Yeah, I don't know. I think they'd have the tail if they had a squirrel. What is that? A turtle? Is that a a, a goat with a turtle? <laughs> a turtle with a goat face? I don't know. <laughs> uh, hey, it's Alice in Wonderland. What do you expect? She met all types of creatures. And it's been a long time since I read Alice. I don't remember what all she, who who all she met, other than the rabbit. It's a turtle goat. I don't know. I lost count. Lots of drugs. Lots. <laughs> Ozma. 
Ozma, should we all meet here one night after doing some edibles and I'll read you guys some stories from Alice in Wonderland? Would you like that, Ozma? We're Saxton. She's like, I'm in. Heidi Leslie, I'm in too. Count me in. <laughs> Who else is in? Well, you uh, could turn on Lava Lamp and sit there and read. Right? I haven't done that in a long time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hello, Denali. Eleven vintage books. That was so much fun. Thank you guys for letting me do that. Peggy's at 42. Daniel's like, I'll be sober. <laughs> Come on. No, not bored at all. I personally went to Walmart, had dinner, picked up my takeout, and now I will keep listening while getting ready for bed. Okay, honey. I'm so glad. <laughs> all right. So we've got Peggy Gilmore at 42. That's it. All right. Let's see. Christine's like, I'll take an edible. Heather went out. Mary, did Mary go out? Yep, Mary went out. So we should be good to go. Who's Lewis Carroll? What's Tam talking about? Lewis Carroll, uh, the author of Alice. Oh, he was not a good person? I don't know. I've never read a biography. All right. We're at fair warning, you guys. We've got Peggy for a high of, what did you say, Shriker? 42. Uh, 42. We're going to be sold. Here's our last chance. If anybody wants to put a bid in, if not, we are sold, sold, sold to my friend Peggy for $42. Thank you, Peggy. Oops, Hit the wrong button. Oh no, I didn't, it went through. Okay. Peggy, you're gonna love these, they're awesome. They're really awesome. All right, let me just move these over. And can I show another lot of books? Are you guys okay with that? I like having Stryker here when I'm showing the books because he's so well-versed in them. Heidi says, no, you need to move on. Come on, Heidi, one more. One more lot. Heidi, what do you want to see? Do you have any jewelry to show? <clears throat> um, I have some brooches and I have some bracelets and I think I have a couple of necklaces here, but I don't have a jewelry, um, I don't have a jewelry jar prepared. Okay, what could I got here? Little goldens. Little golden books. Okay, so this one, the spine is definitely crooked. And it's got tape on it. And it's ripped. So buyer beware. Winnie the Pooh. And... Might I guess, take down the balloon there. I guess it doesn't matter. Um, on the year, right? We don't have to look at each year. No, and th these are can be a little more complicated as well to figure out first editions on Little Goldens. It's good to have a good reference book for them. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll just show them. Winnie the Pooh. This one is Lady and the Tramp. This one is Sleeping Beauty. This one is Numbers. This one looks like it's old. This one's a happy day book. It's an imposter. Yeah, they tried to cash in. <laughs> Look at it. It's an imposter, you guys. 
It's silver instead of gold. Yes, an imposter. You have an imposter amongst amongst us. Well, this one's pretty tattered, but I'll include it anyway. Five it's a good story, firemen. though. Five little firemen. Is it? Yeah. 22nd printing. Printed it every year, it looks like. Wow. Little Red Riding Hood. This one looks awesome. I wonder if this one's older. What well, says 29 cents? So it's got to be at least 40 years old. Oh, yeah. That's probably back in the 50s. Yep. Oh, 60s. All right. The Jolly Barnyard. That's an old one, too, for sure. My Little Dinosaur. $1.79. So that's a little bit newer. Baby Animals, Mother Goose, Walt Disney. Yeah, there's a whole stack of them, Heidi, for sure. The Three Little Bears. This one's definitely older. You can tell by the illustration. It says, it says copyright 1948, but we don't know. But it's definitely, you can tell by the illustrations that it's older. This Mary Poppins is definitely older. The Nutcracker, mm, probably not that old. Beauty and the Beast is newer. This Pinocchio is definitely newer. But look at, see, look at the difference. And, you know, you can totally tell the difference. Like, look at how old this one is. The Saggy Baggy Elephant, 29 cents. Tam, you don't see uh, Little Goldens in Scotland at all? Oh, you don't? That is so cute. Okay, and then we have Dumbo, which this one looks newer. And Little Cottontail, that's definitely old. 39 cents. See, they went up 10 cents. And here's another Dumbo, 49 cents. But look at, they discounted it to 44 cents. <laughs> wow. But that's definitely older, too. Lionel, are you familiar with that store? No. I've never seen it either. Which one? Lionel, the store on that sticker. Oh, oh, Lionel, no. Nope. Alice in Wonderland doesn't have a price on it. This one is Mickey and the Beanstalk. That's newer. And then here's Winnie the Pooh, which is newer. Let's see what year this one says. 1991. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell it's, I mean, you look at, you know, the difference. Oh, yeah. Look at it. Like this one, you you know it's so much older. I usually look at the spine, see how shiny it is, how many hands it's been through. Well, this one's pretty shiny for being old. Yeah, but you can see the edge, the corner is pretty rubbed on the very corner of it, you know, up and down it. A lot of the black has been rubbed off, so it's been handled a lot. I don't know. It looks pretty good to me. You see the very corner, the long corner? Yeah, I see what you're talking about. All the black about. is missing off of it. Yeah. When you compare it to the newer book, yeah, you can see that it was probably, you know, in someone's hand like this. Right, like it's been silver. handled a bunch. The silver, the silver has rubbed off of it. Okay, so let's give you a count on the golden books. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. And 23. 
23 total. And we have a high bid from Heather for $27. Dees comes in at 29. Heather Blackwell comes in at 31. All right. Dees comes in at 33. Heather Blackwell comes in at 35. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Dees. Dees comes in at 37. I don't think I've seen a dibble box for quite a while. For me? Yeah. I haven't done any. Giving up on them? No. No, just switching it up. Just been doing different things. 39 to Heather Blackwell. Dees is out. Whoops. You never tried the uh, make your own dibble box yet? No, I haven't tried that. It was such a great idea. Yep. It was such a great idea. Shriker had, I'm going to bring you on Shriker. Shriker had such a great idea. I saw I have my, my shelves, which were inspired by Shriker <laughs> in um, half of my cottage. I got these bookshelves and I had so many books. And so I put a lot of the books on the bookshelves. That's on the other side, like of the cottage um, in the living room part of the cottage. And so Shriker had come up with the idea that you should like give people, what did you say? Give people a number. Uh, well, whoever wants to do it. I mean, you get to choose as I'm sure there'd be a lot of people wanting to do it, but do a random picker or whatever. And whoever got to do it, you know, you take your camera along each shelf and let them pick out items to put in their own double box. But how many items do they pick? Well, that was something we hadn't really talked out about. just yet. You know, if they wanted a $50 dibble box or a $100 dibble box, we had to figure out a way to, you know, how many, how many, how much, that type of thing. Yeah, because, I mean, if they picked out little itty bitty things or big things, right. because I've got all kinds of stuff. I don't have just books on those shelves. I've right. got all kinds of beautiful vintage things and vintage plush. And you guys, when I, when I do the intro video, you see it in the... um in the video and it may be something you put 10 items on each shelf you get to pick one item off of each shelf you know as you go so you end up with 30 items something like that you know there was a lot of variations we were trying to work out yeah trying to work it out but just to do something different i thought you know i mm -hmm. Shrekker came up with that idea i thought that was a fun idea um Yeah, so I don't know. I, I would have to think about it. And it would, yeah, it wouldn't just be. Uh, oh books, no, no, you know, no, no! You know, you might have a few books on each shelf, but then you'd have trinkets and jewelry and plush, and you know, every shelf would have, you know, a mixture of you know a lot of different things. So. Yeah, I'd have like a jewelry jar, you know, not a big one like I not usually right. sell for a hundred plus dollars. You know, have a stand with you know ten watches on this one, maybe ten ten necklaces over here. You know, yeah. mix it all up. Yeah, so. I could put clothes on the shelves. I just have to determine like how much and how many pieces. Sharon says, Shriker, you look like you lost weight. I wish I had, but I think I'm probably the same. I lost a pound. A pound? Yeah. Well, it's a start. <laughs> the doctor so. was so proud of me. <laughs> but I lost a pound. I lost one pound from my last visit, which was about six months ago. You know, they're keeping well, you're not going the wrong direction anyway. You're going in the right direction. One so. pound. I'm like, are you well. kidding me? All right. Let me sell this to Heather Blackwell. Heather Blackwell for $39 for the Golden Books. 
but I kind of got that idea from a, a Twitch streamer that kind of does a, you know, a shopping spree. You get a five minute shopping spree and he takes you around the store and, you know, you get to look at all the shelves and you get to tell them, okay, let's go look at, you know, this type of game. And okay, I want that one and that one and that one. You're still paying whatever the retail price is, but you get a you get your own personal shopping spree around the store to pick out whatever you want to pick out. And you had five minutes to do it. So well, kind maybe, of in the same vein. Maybe that's the way I should do it. Just put a time limit on it. Well, no, because then the person can say, okay, I want everything off of that whole entire shelf, you know. Oh yeah, give me that shelf too, you know. So you Well no, you they can't do that. They can only pick individual items. One item off of each shelf or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, they have to, they can only pick, it's kind of like, I mean, what if they, but what if they end up getting, I mean, I, I would, I would try to put things that are valuable on the shelf, but I don't look things up all the right. time. So That's I don't right. always know what things, what value things have. So um, what if they pay a hundred dollars and they pick out 10 items and the stuff doesn't you know, I don't want to lose a customer because they're well, mad. Not everybody's in it for value, you know. Not everybody's trying to pick things that are high dollar for resale, you know. They could be picking things for, like, their own personal use. That's right. I mean, a lot of your dibble boxes don't necessarily have, you know, are full of money makers. A lot of times they are, of course, yeah, but not every are. time. Talk to you Courtney know. about it. <laughs> well, sure. She's she has scored. She has scored with my dibble boxes. I think I think some other people have done really well with my dibble boxes. Um, all right, you guys, don't kill me. And I know I lost like twenty people in the chat. People left. I'm gonna do one more book lot while Shriker's here. Just one more. Do Why categories. Do categories? I can choose five categories. Hi, Ron. Welcome in. I don't know how to do categories. Like, I don't know what that means. Well, you just put one shelf would be all jewelry and another shelf, all books. And, and then they would pick just out of, like, those categories? Yeah, you know. Oh, my God, you guys. I'm going to sell all these clothes. They're all over the living room, and I don't want them there anymore. <laughs> And it, the goal isn't to have somebody take 30 minutes to make a box either. You know, it, it has to be down to, you know, five to 10 minutes. So everyone else doesn't get, you know, bored of watching it. And I that's why you only do one a night at the most. I think it would be fun to put like a timer on it. Well, it would work better for you because you're you're in a smaller area, more confined areas, so it could work that way for you. Yeah. So you're not running all over the house, you know, showing people things. Oh no, I would just keep it in the dine in the right exactly in the exactly. living room of the cottage. Supermarket sweep. Yep. And prepare for it. Okay. Here we go. Did you ever get those books I sent you? You got them, right? I got a package. I haven't quite opened it yet. <laughs> you haven't? <laughs> no. Are you kidding? Well, you know, I've been a little busy, so. Uh, ah, bears on wheels. Dr. Seuss. Berenstein's. <laughs> so you, you're kind of a specialist on this, right? Uh, I mean, I've sold a lot of books. How much is shipping to Scotland? Well, that's a good question. It would be depend on the weight and the size and yeah, all of that. and how much the package was. To, you know, so what your VAT would be. So this is what I would do for you for my international buyers. This is what I would do. You can um, you can bid on it, and whatever you bid on it, I will give you a shipping quote. And if you decide that, because don't forget, you've got shipping and you have um, customs charges. You have both so that you'll have to pay. So I don't see what your custom charges are. You do. Um, so 
you can bid on something. I'll give you a quote. If there's somebody bidding against you, I will offer. If if you decide you don't want to pay the custom charges and the shipping charges, I will offer them up to the next highest bidder. And they say no, because Tam bid me all the way up to $50 or whatever it is. They might say, yes, okay, I'll take them. But they might say no, because they were bidding against you. If they say no, I'll just bring it back to auction. I'm okay with that, doing that for international buyers. So that's your option. That's what you can do. I'll just write down the backup bidder. If you decide it's too much money, just say, you know, sorry, not going to do it. And, um, yeah, and Peggy says it's pretty pricey going to Scotland. Yeah. But there again, it depends on the weight and the, the price of the items. So, right. And I do use pirate ship, so. I mean, if you can get it, you know, four pounds and under, the shipping isn't so terrible. Another Bebar. So these are a collection of Dr. Seuss. Early Seuss. Early Seuss. Now, they're not by Seuss, but they're just part of his little library. You know, the I can read. The iBook. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I'm sure everyone here has read that book. Right? Here's another Bears on Wheels. Newer. Hand, hand, fingers, thumb. <clears throat> Here is another Babar Loses His Crown. Can you zoom back a little bit, maybe? Sure. Heather's in for 15. This one is called the Bear Scouts. Yeah, there's a lot of Baron stains out there. Very popular, though. The Nose Book. Dee's been to Scotland, the world traveler. Oh, thanks, Tam. Come back anytime. Make sure you're subscribed because I go live. You never know. Sometimes I go live at midnight. Sometimes I go live for coffee. Sometimes I go uh, live... Midnight for you would be like 6 a.m. For, for Tam. So Yeah, so you never know when I'm going to go live. I never know when I'm going to go live. I go live when when the mood strikes me. Sometimes I give like myself a 15-minute notice, and I just go live. I know a lot Which of people... It's probably, go. what, 3 a.m. there now, so... Inside, outside, upside down. I know a lot of people are like, I didn't get a notification. Sorry. I don't really give time for them to send out notifications. Yeah, you just like to start the stream. Let's go. Yeah, I just, you know what? I can't be like other channels. Like they put up their streams like a week before. Like I don't know where I'm going to be a week from now, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like I have no idea where I'm going to be. I have no idea where I'm going to be in two hours, to be well, honest you, with you. You know, your streams are much closer to the real pop-up auction, you know? It's not planned. It's not planned a week in advance. Yeah. You know, it just happens, and that's what yeah. a pop up is. You know, let's let's go have a pop up right now. You know, and <laughs> and I don't even use the word pop up in my time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I am truly a pop up channel because you never know. Oh, there's a good one. Bears in the night. Is that a good one? Oh yeah, I remember that one. Tim needs a wrench. Did Tim register? Do you mind looking for me, Shriker? Uh, Tim is not registered. Tam does not get a wrench until he fills out the form. Right. Little black 
Little Black A Pony. Walter Farley. There's a classic. Is that, classic author. Yeah. Is, is there a misspell? Is that misspelled? <laughs> Farley? No. No. Little Black A Pony. Well, there's a pause in there. Little Black A Pony. Little, Little Black. Black is the name of the pony. Oh, I didn't see the comma. The comma. The comma. I didn't see the, the comma. comma. This is a great collection, right? A lot the of Seuss. Here's another one of those come over to my house. Yeah, but D being sub doesn't mean registered. So two different things, right? Yes. William Wallace from Scotland. Yes, if they if they're uh, if they're subbed, um, it just yeah, it just means that they um, subscribe to the channel. So they'll get notifications. The nose book. Alexander Smith, are you from Scotland as well? Alexander Smith, I must be hitting a um, algorithm in Scotland tonight. Put me in the zoo. Do you know that one? Yep, yeah, I sure do. Susan's in for 17. And yeah, there's back in at 19. The earbook. The earbook. That's a much newer one. Yeah, but Tim just and Bell's the silver member. Oh, Tim, you thank you so much for joining for joining membership. But we still, if you if you want a shipping quote, um, we still need a registration. It doesn't cost anything to to register, honestly. Um Bryn 10 at 21. But yeah, Tim, the, it's, it's pinned up at the top in that blue box. You just need to fill out that form for registration. So let me count them for you. It's 1.44 a.m. I'm bored. <laughs> so there are... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. There's twenty-four, and these are definitely newer. That one and that one and this one and well, they're they're newer printings, not necessarily newer books. Like Bears on Wheels have been around a long time. It's just yeah. a newer book, newer printing book. These are your older ones. Oh, there you go. D has idea. What? You showed a kilt in your uh, preview. I did. There you go. All the Scots have come over. How would they know? Yep, twenty-four books, Alexander. How would they know? Oh, you know. They know. Google knows. YouTube knows. Really? If you take a picture of something, it knows what it is. Oh, yeah. I showed two, like, authentic um, kilts, like, made in Scotland kilts. Yeah. You think Google picked up my words, made in Scotland, and saw the kilts and, and promoted me over to Scotland? No, I don't think that, but... <laughs> Because everything is listening to you, right, Ozma? That's right. So if so, if Big Brother is listening to us, why did it take them so long to find Brian Laundry? <laughs> because it was flooded in the area. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. Well, some people knew where he was, but. I'm a member of Donna because she's a YouTuber. I prefer content creator. <laughs> YouTuber. <laughs> That's what I usually Google watch. is watching. Yes. Google is watching. Thank you, Alexander Smith. I appreciate you coming in and being here. Swamp Gators. All right. Heather Blackwell's at 31. Heather's like, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> yeah, he, he had to be feeling so guilty about what he'd done. That, yeah. Oh, thank you, Alexander. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, we were talking about it a little bit this morning um, when we had coffee um, with T and Donna. And I mean, I, I know it's just a theory. It's just a theory of mine. And I know everyone has their own theories. But my theory is when he came back without her and his parents took him out camping, they had a heart to heart with him and said, look at we're going to call an attorney, you know, because we're going to need representation. You killed her. What you did was wrong. You strangled her, whatever you did to her. You're going to have to make a decision. You're either going to have to spend the rest of your life in jail. If you don't want to go to jail, then you're going to have to probably, and I can't imagine as a parent saying this to no. a child, kill yourself. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? I, I They may have done that, but like you, I don't think they made that an option to him, you know, about killing yourself. I don't think a parent can do that. Well, what do you think the parent did? Do you think the parent said, just go out into the wilderness and fend for yourself? Mm, you know, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think it was their decision, of course, but he just did what he thought he could do. You know, you can't, it's hard to run these days. Is everybody knows who you are. Daniel, you know? Daniel says, as long as we don't want <laughs> washing fruit. Yeah. We were talking about you know what, though? Things. I heard a little bit of that about you and washing cans. And last night when I was cooking dinner, I was like, oh, no, I better wash the top of this can before I open it. <laughs> it was just a can of beans. I was like, oh, I know I need to wash the top of this can. You've got to clean it. You've got to use soap and water. And you've got well, to I didn't use any soap, but I, I rinsed it off and wiped it off. But No, get a paper towel, put soap on it, and uh, wipe that can. Wipe it. I'm not, I am not a germaphobic. I am not. I like things neat and tidy for sure, but I am not a germaphobic. But there's certain things that really, really bother me. It's so weird. It's like, that's one of the things that really, really bother me. <laughs> oh, Marjorie, I'm sure they already did that in the first hour when they found the, found the bones. It doesn't take long to do DNA these days. They knew real quick. Osmond's like, got to prime your immune system. That's right. That's how we grew up, eating dirt, getting all that bad bacteria. I know. I was saying that to someone. I'm trying to remember where I was. I was, I was saying uh, to someone. Um, yes, Peggy, it was him. Yeah, I was like, yeah, and I drink faucet water, and I also would drink water out of a hose if I had to. Like, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Like, I'm, if you I'm had to, I had to. <laughs> when you're out gardening and watering your plants, you don't drink the water sometimes out of the hose. No, because the water comes. It's like, well, maybe if you let the water run through the hose for a while. No, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would if I really, really had to. But I would come in the house and I would drink the faucet water, but not in the rubber hose water. Yeah. Mm, I don't think I would. Yeah. I don't think I would. So I don't know. I don't know what his parents were thinking. I don't know if they... Just let him just stay out there to fend for himself. I, I just, I would love. I well, would I love think that was probably a backup plan. He knew the area, so he thought he could survive there for a while until something else came along where he could escape to. You know, and something happened and he didn't get out of there. Whether it got flooded or an animal got him or who knows what, you know. But I don't think it was his intention to stay there the rest of his life or anything. But when everyone in America knows your face, you know, where are you going to go? Oh, Tim, let me see. Are you going to look? Yeah, it's uh... awesome. It's good. Thank you so much. All right. So now I, I hate to ask this question, but he, Tam is from Scotland and I know names can be different. Is Tam a a man's name or a female's name? Well, since it's Tam and Bell, I'm assuming Bell would be the woman's name and Tam would be the man's name. But I Tam may be wrong. Bell. You know? Remember that guy that shot up the abortion clinic and then hid in the woods for like two years? 
I don't remember that guy. He's a man. He's a man. But Tam is a man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Took me a minute to get it out. Tam, so so glad you joined. Everybody say hi to Tam and 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 behave yourselves and welcome him in. No, but who was the gangster, you guys? I think he was from Boston. Who was the gangster that like they found him in Florida? They found him here in Florida and he was from Boston. He was part of the crime family. Him and his wife or girlfriend, they disappeared for like 20 plus years. What was his name? And then they finally caught him and then he died shortly after that of cancer. Um, but he was on the run for, for, for 20 years. He was on like the FBI most wanted list. Yeah, well, Osmond, for sure, you can survive a long time outside if you have the skills, but I don't think Brian Laundry had the skills to survive in the wilderness. Whitey Bulger, he disappeared. The FBI could not find him. How long was it, you guys? 20-plus years? He was from one of the Boston crime families. And um, Yeah, but TV and Internet's a little different these days than it was then. Well, that was only like 10 years ago, I think, right? No, it's been longer than that. Since Whitey Bulger? When did he go on the run? No, he went on the run like 20 years ago. But More I think than that. More when did Whitey that? Bulger go on the run? Christine says over 20 years, but they caught him like, I don't know, four or five years ago. Look it up, Shriker. I can see that you do. You're already on it. <laughs> You're already on the computer looking it up. They've been on the run since 95. 95. So, you know, not really internet or anything like that. We didn't have Twitter, you know, so. Eric Rudolph, early 2000s, lived in North Carolina woods. They found him in 2011. Oh, my God. It's been that long since they found him. Holy cow. That's incredible. What do we have for a high bid on this? Mm -hmm. Let's Hope see. see. We have Heather B. at 31. Heather B. at 31. There it is. Got it. So, but it's, it's going to get harder every year to go on the run and actually, you know, not be caught. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised that this dude was able to hide for as long as he did. To be How long was he out there? Three weeks, maybe? Something? Four maybe. weeks? 50 days. 50 days, seven weeks. 50 days. Hi, Hi Boatman. Boatman. Welcome in. It didn't seem, yeah. seem like it was that long, but you know, he could have had somebody bringing him food and you know, it's not, I don't think he was out there living off the, you know, living off of nature. He, he doesn't look the type. Be. Law enforcement was out there, like five different agencies were out there day and night when the parents said that they thought that that's where he was. They never left that reserve, that preserve, that wilderness, yeah. that park. They they had they had people there day and night, and he didn't have a phone. He well, you wouldn't want to have a phone if you were out there. Yeah, he left his he left his phone. Ron, we don't know if he drowned. We have no idea. We don't know if an animal got him. But uh, what we were talking about this morning was the autopsy from the FBI did say that there was a partial skull. So the animals had been at the body, right? Or so. a gun. Mm, yeah. And he decided to oust himself. There was a big accident in the 90s in Britain James Bulger, a toddler, was kidnapped and killed by two children. That's sad. You still need to uh, wrench, Tam. Oh, okay. I'll do that right now. Yeah, the whole thing's a little fishy, but, you know, the outcome was predictable, I think. Oh, I, I, I didn't think that that would be what the outcome was. Really? 
Oh, I knew that the minute they started looking for him, I knew he was going to be dead when they found him. You did? I no, yeah, I had no doubts about that. I I was convinced that he like was living in like a friend or relative's house or basement and he would just go on living there for like nah. the rest of his life and they would just feed him and take care of him and sitting at a computer and laughing at us all. I never thought mm -hmm. he was out in that wilderness. Well, I didn't know where he was, but I, I figured he'd suicide himself for sure. Yeah. Jeanette says she thinks that she he was in um, Mexico. I knew he hadn't left the country. It wouldn't be hard to get through Mexico these days for sure. Yes, it would. They ask for identifications at the border. <laughs> Don't they? What border? At the big fence? Is there a border there now? Is there? Did they get rid of the border? The, the border isn't the border. Well, I mean, to go from like California into Mexico, don't you have to go through some sort of customs like to drive into? <laughs> you go the same way they're coming back the other direction. You don't have to see anybody. Ozma's like, um, no, Donna. Um, <laughs> what border? There is no border there. They're all laughing at me. Yeah, you know, there, there's no border. It's gone since the election. We've had a million people come into this country with no border in, the, in this year. I thought to go into like Tijuana. If you're going to do it legit, yeah, you're going to go through customs and everything there at the border. But that's not the way people are doing it these days. Well, there's other roads you can take. Like, do you have to go through the desert? You can, yeah, for sure. That's how drugs have been coming forever. So if I wanted to go to Mexico and disappear, I'm thinking about it, you guys, who wants to buy a cottage cash gift certificate? <laughs> you will offer cottage cash up tonight. If I don't show up next week, you'll know where to find me, Mexico. Or not find you. <laughs> or not find me. So, <clears throat> okay, so there's roads. Like if I seriously wanted to go to Mexico, like next week and not go through the border. There's like there's a road years. all the way along the border. If you want to park your car on that road at the border and just walk across and you can disappear for sure. No, you're not going to drive your car through a, a checkpoint. You, you can do that with no problem being a U.S. citizen. But if you want to disappear, that's not the way you're going to do it. You're, you're going to park your car somewhere and just walk across and be gone. Disappear. But you probably would have to walk for like you're walking through a desert. No, nah. don't go to Mexico. Dangerous. Yeah, it depends on where you go. Not all of Mexico is dangerous. I mean, I know when I went to, when I drove into Canada, they were really strict and to drive. Canada is different, yeah, for sure. Canada was very strict. They yeah. even had the canine dogs walking around the car and smelling and wanting identification and you know everything but they were really funny because some cars they just let through and some cars they randomly stopped yeah yeah i have well, that's, the, that's the way mexico used to be too you know but things are a lot different these days than they were you know 20 years ago i wonder why they just allow some cars to drive through and some cars they they stop and they interrogate you and I'm like the wrong person to stop and interrogate. I really am. You'll tell them everything, won't you? I tell them everything. <laughs> like when they start talking to me, they want me to get back into the car and leave because I'm like the go wrong away, person. go away. Yeah, I'm the wrong person to pull over and ask questions to. When we were we were leaving my daughter's volleyball game the other night, there was um. There was some parents standing outside and I started talking and I started talking about my um, my trip to um, to Italy, you know, when I was 18 years old. And um, and then and so the the dad took he, the, his phone rang and he said, oh, sorry. He says, I got to take this call. And I said, oh, that's okay. That's okay. And then my Angelina's like, yeah, mama, we really should go because the school bus is, you know, we need to be at the school for, and I said, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll go. And, and we started walking and, and Bo was like, <laughs> I had to pull you away from that because 
I could just tell you were like priming yourself for like this big, long conversation with these people. She didn't want to stand there that long. Let's go. No, she knows how I am. She knows that once I get talking, I just like start talking. Do you ever feel like somebody fakes getting a call whenever you're talking to them? <laughs> no, I heard the phone ring. Striker. <laughs> I'm watching well, that was you. the beginning of the conversation. They didn't know you yet. I'm watching you, Shriker. I'm watching you now. If you get a phone call and you tell me that you got to take it, I know what you're up to. All right? You just gave yourself up. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Uh, I'm are you going to sell the books to Heather, or should we keep bidding? Uh, Susan, no. you're bidding. Do you want to keep continue bidding? Let's just give them to whoever. Were, were the books sold? No, they're not. And Fringe was bidding. We're, we're at $31 with Heather. That's the high bed. Let's close them. 24 Anybody? books. Anybody else? Anybody $31. else? If not, we're going to go once. All right. Give them 15 seconds now. See how Don't spring it on them. The subject, you guys, are we selling the books now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think I'd rather live in Canada than the Mexico, Ozma. Uh, of course, I like the forest and the wilderness, so. And we're going twice. Canada's beautiful. Yeah. I went to, um, I'm probably saying it wrong, um, skiing, but I didn't ski. <laughs> That's a long story. Um, Mount Treblon. Mount Treblon in Canada. And we went. Well, the, the ski lodge is where all the action happens. So you don't need to go skiing. Yeah. So we went there to go skiing. We really went there to go skiing, but I I, I never skied. We we were there for like five days. It's so much fun. Never left the lodge. So much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Oh my God. Young, to be young and carefree and having so much fun. Does anybody know where Mount Treblon is? in Canada. It's kind of like if you're looking at the map of Canada, you go straight up the East Coast, it's to the left a little bit. Nova so, Scotia. So beautiful. So beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's like, like gorgeous. All right. We're going to sell this to Heather. B. $31. It's nine o'clock. I'm not going out. I saw you texting me. I'm, I'm not going um, out to dinner now. He must have fallen asleep. I told him I was not saying that at all. It's Jules. Actually, I'm saying the opposite of that. You know, you, if you're staying in the lodge for five days, not going out, uh, out of the lodge, you know, what, what are you doing? Good night, Susan. Was this before or after you were married? Huh. What's that? When you went to the ski lodge. Oh, way before I was married. I didn't get married until I was 35. I was young, free, single until I was 35 years old. I waited. So the minute you got married, you got old, unfree. I started having kids. I started having kids the minute I got pregnant. I mean, the minute I got married, I got, I, I was pregnant before I was married. We had been together for four years. We, we had a long engagement. And um, so we were engaged for almost five years. And um, we knew we wanted to have a family. We had bought a house, had our, he, he had his own business. I was working a, a great job, Winston Flowers. And it was uh, four months before the wedding. We were having this big godfather wedding, huge godfather wedding. So I have to show you the pictures someday, you guys. You'll love, you'll love the pictures. Um, Donatella, I think I first heard of your channel from Chosen Goods Reseller. Yes, Carissa is a... She's a sweetheart and she's so at four months at your wedding, were you showing at that point? Well, I had I I 
bought this incredible wedding dress that was like beautiful and it was lace like the top of it was all lace all the way down to like the hips and I, we had to buy extra lace and so you were hiding it no, no 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 never had to so the lace was like a ridiculous amount that was like 225 dollars a yard so we bought so the, the no, no not me but the bridal shop bought a uh, half a yard because all we needed like just in case we had to let it out because i was so thin I was so skinny and I was so thin and I figured at four months I would start showing. I found out I was pregnant at three months. So we had to hurry up and order the lace. And then I was going to have my final fitting like just a few days before the wedding if we had to let it out. And I went for the final fitting and we didn't have to let it out. Mm -hmm. So four months pregnant, I wasn't showing. I actually didn't start showing and I was really thin. I actually didn't start showing until like the end of my fifth month that I was pregnant. Good night, Lorraine. My husband's family was devastated. My family wasn't, but his family was. His father's a big Catholic church going everyday person. I have four kids, Tam. So I, I had my first child when I was um, 35 and I had my last child when I was 40. So I had four kids in five years. <laughs> so my kids are all a year apart. Ozma, was that in California or Hawaii? What's that? I got married on the beach in bare feet. Oh, gosh, yeah. I think you told me that before. That's awesome. Not me. My wedding was so formal, so formal. And I had a lot of family that came from Italy, too. Oh, she got married in Hawaii. So it wasn't public knowledge that you were pregnant at the time oh we told everybody oh everybody knew it oh yeah everybody knew it was no secret i mean we 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 had a house we we were adults 35 years old you were just making it official i mean no i mean we got engaged and planned the wedding way before mm -hmm. you know we got pregnant I mean, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't like an embarrassment to me. It was, you know, it was, a, it was a joyful moment. You have two boys. I have two boys and two girls. Oops. My phone just glitched. Two boys and two girls. Are you going to show another lot? I don't think so. I've been on for four hours. How many clothes did you sell? Well, I sold 19 lots. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, no. Well, I lot. saw five lots that weren't clothes. So you did 14 lots of clothing? I sold um, 13. I sold 13 pieces of clothing, and I have about 100 pieces. You did all one-offs? I did all one off. Some of them were really, really special. I thought about doing reseller bundles of these clothes, but I've got things like Versace and how am I going to throw Versace clothes in a bundle and charge $50 for it? I can't do that. I don't know. You've done things like that a lot. And I've got Chinese silks and, um, my gosh, I've got so many, I've got so many beautiful things. I I was I found this in there, which I thought was really crazy. Like, what the hell? It's it says called 80s all over it. Upo Studio. It's pants, a jacket, and a matching tie. This looks like a now is that the highest quality silk you can buy is from China? Is that what you're saying? Who's saying that? You, you said yeah, I've got Chinese silk. Oh, I've got clothes made in China that are silk. I don't know if that's the highest. I have no idea. Well, I don't know much about silk. That's why I was wondering. I figured silk from Italy would be nicer than China, but I have no idea. 
I'm going to see if my son wants to wear this for Halloween <laughs> in case he's looking for a Halloween costume. He wasn't even alive in the 80s. I know, but he might like this. I don't know if he's going to a Halloween party. It's brand new. If he doesn't, I'm want supposed it, to wear one next Saturday at the auction, but I don't know what to wear. You're supposed oh. to wear oh, a, a costume? Yeah. So, Christine, is China silk good then? You say India is good, but is China good for silk? I figured India would be good because that's probably somewhat where it started, the in the silk trade in India. But Mary Pisano says, I got married in Indiana where they give pillows and toasters for wedding gifts. Not so much that anymore, right? Now everybody's got these extravagant wedding gift lists, and mine know. was very extravagant. Yeah, not because of my friends, because of my parents' friends. Like my parents made me like register for all that extravagant stuff. All right, Chinese silk is different than silk from India. Yeah, but China is good. All right. All right, one last good lot for those that, that have stayed till the end. Well, what do you want to see? A really nice piece. Do you, is, let's see that Versace you were talking about. The dress? Should I do like... Let's see some Chinese silk. A, That's what we're talking about. A big um, designer lot. Started at a hundred dollars. Do a big lot, okay. And I'll start it at a hundred. Well, how much were you getting for single pieces earlier? Um, I was getting everywhere from twenty six, thirty five, seven dollars for one twenty twenty six thirty two twenty five mm -hmm. so at least four pieces started at a hundred and go from there okay all right so this lot is going to start at one hundred dollars designer designer yeah <laughs> all designer stuff yes and the more you bid the more the higher you bid the higher i'll just keep going and this is going to be my lot number 20. Okay. That's good. All right. Let me go get it. And I'm going to put myself on full screen. My sisters got married in New York and had huge Italian weddings, made enough for a down payment on their house. Wow. That would have been good. Okay. So here is your first piece. This is a... Uh, it's Dior. Oh, Christine, sorry to hear that. All right, what do we got? Doré. Size 14. And what's the material on this one? All silk. All silk. This is all silk. It's um, made in China. Size 14. It's got an RN number on it. It's got a zipper in the back and it's got long sleeves with beautiful beading on the sleeves and sweet little button I'll be on. and it looks like there's no pattern it's just all right so that's the first one so that whole upper is all beads up there, even the colored ones and everything. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll show it again closer if you want me to. So there's that. And...
Now, was that black or blue, the first piece? Black. Black, okay. And that's a dragon? It's all embroidered. Ja dragon. 100% silk made in Japan. You know and the size know. didn't show up there. Is it actually printed on there or not? And that's a robe or kimono or? Yeah, no size. Okay. There's no size on it. It's absolutely beautiful. Embroidered dragon. And that is red, not pink. No, it's red. Oh, uh, good, Leon. Thank you. And it's all embroidered. Look at this. Gold thread and silver. Gold and silver. Yep. Okay. And that was Japan. Sold by the length. Okay, can you measure the length on that real quick? You got your tape measure there, Donna? I do. They are one size and sold by the length. Thank you, Marcia. Um, I do have it. It sits here. It lives here with me. It mm -hmm. never leaves here. Forty-one inches. Forty-one inch kimono. This is called Hazley Collection, size extra large. Hazley Collection. All right, let's see the tag up close and personal. They want to see the tag good, really well. That's a H Halsey. Hal Hazley. I don't know. I say. Is Hazley. that an L or an I? It looks like an L. Halsey. No, it's H A Halsley. Oh, Halsley. H A L S E Y. Yeah, Halsey. Yeah. And that's very sparkly. It's beautiful. Okay, and where was it made? 100% cotton made in Indonesia. Indonesia. Hand washed, cool water, do not bleach. And the size is a... Too large. Do I want this? Will I wear this if we're going out to dinner? Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Oh, no. It might be a little sparkly for you. Oh, I'm sparkly. <laughs> well, you are, but you don't need it on your on your shirt, do you? <laughs> I love sparkly things. Honestly, okay. I do, I do, I do. Okay, and this one? That looks Japanese. Or at least oriental it's got oh look at the interior wow yeah it's it's stunning and then this is the top of it and this is the name on it Hmm, 2XL. Jules, that's right, honey. Sparkly white. You know that. <laughs> My favorite color. All right. See, see you later, Leon. Bye, Leon. Um, anyways, the, the tag is Chinese, so you're going to have to, like, figure out... Um, I like the interior print on it. It looks pretty.
pretty neat. That's it's definitely pretty. Chinese silk made, okay? It's so pretty, you know, when you're walking and that's the inside of it. Yeah, you get a nice flash of color there instead of just a plain so red pretty. or white or whatever. And it's got, what are they, dragons? Uh, peacocks? Oh, it's peacocks. I don't know. It looks, the, the blue one looks like it's longer like a dragon, like you say. That looks like it, a dragon. That, yeah, that's a dragon for sure. Yep. Late 70s. Yeah, Asian 2XL is different than American yeah, for these sure. These are definitely vintage. Yeah. But all this whole, all these clothing, all this, these clothes that I got are definitely, um, you know, vintage. And let me go get. This is amazing. This is, feels like chenille. It's called Sue Blue. Definitely boutique clothes. Sue Blue. Sue Blue, New York. New York. And wait until you see how pretty this is. This is amazing. I, I mean, see. Probably, yeah, it's it's like a it's a large and it's like chenille. So it's a red, brown, dark pink. Chenille. It's all chenille. The whole jacket is chenille. And the interior has a different design, does it not? Yeah. It has stripes. Oh yeah, it's reversible. It's reversible. Look, that's the inside. I like that design better. Oh, but if you like chenille, you love this. And that's chenille. It's a beautiful jacket. And it's very heavy. So and you're just deciding on the size as an XL? Is that what we're saying? Yeah, it fits me, so it's definitely an XL. And that should be American size since it's from New York, right? Yeah, it's probably from a New York boutique. Look at how pretty that is. Can you guys see how pretty that is? It's beautiful. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. Uh, I think that's five, actually. So you got three on the left, two on the right. Five, yeah, that's five. And then this is the last one. <laughs> That's different. Glen of Michigan. Look at this. Oh my God. Let's see. That's a vintage piece. You think Angelina would go crazy over this? No, I don't think so. With a little t shirt tank top underneath it? No. I think she would. No, I don't think so. No? You better get her on the phone and ask her, but I don't think so. That's not her. It's so boutique. I love it. It's awesome. And then this piece here. So that's six pieces. $100 starting bid. All right. I see some nice stuff there. You got some Chinese silk. Had uh, one from, what was it, Thailand? or Oh, Indonesia. One from Indonesia. Hugh, it says I think she would love it. Yeah. I don't think the collars would go. Let me go pick something else. Okay, you're taking that out. Yeah, let me pick something else. I think she probably would love that. I think I sold this before, to be honest with you. Okay, we're going to need to uh, see her wearing that in the next couple of days. 
Bob Mackey. Wearable Art XL. Do you know Bob Mackey? I don't. Bob Mackey is a famous designer. Um, and I think I've sold a jacket that's almost similar to this. What is that made out of? Look at how beautiful that is. That's all embroidered. So Bob Mackey was the designer of the stars. Cher's designer. See, Ozma? He was the designer of the stars. Extra large, 95% cotton, 3% spandex is what it is. And it's a jacket with a zipper in front. Jules, we decided to do one big finish-up lot, starting at $100 for all the pieces you see hanging. They're all beautiful designer pieces. And what was the size of that one, the Mackie? This Bob Mackie is an extra large. And it is a light red or a dark pink? It's red. Red, okay. It's red. It doesn't look like there's any interest. No, I don't, I'm not seeing any bids. All right, so I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pass. Passing. Okay. Pass. No one, no one liked our last lot. No. That's okay. Because there's, you know, there's a tremendous amount of money here. Hi, Holly. You're a little, little late to the show, though. We're only four hours in. Oh, let me put Shaker back on. Okay, so, Shaker, thanks for coming on with me. I appreciate it. So we will be on for, did he say we were having coffee tomorrow morning? Does anybody remember? I don't remember. Holly said she fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Now that you took a nap, you're never going to sleep tonight, Holly. But that's okay. You have tomorrow off. So you can stay up. So you're doing Sunday morning coffee. I did, Jules. I did, I did like, 15 one-offs, and we just decided to, um, to do one big bundle for a $100 start. But I did do one-offs. I did one-offs all night of these clothes. Yeah, I think uh, there's so much variety there that the one-offs probably be the better way to do that. Yep. That's why I decided to do them at one, yep. as one-offs. But I'll bring them back as one-offs. I'll bring those back as one-offs. Oh, he designed for Vanna White as well. Mackie. Yeah. Yes, Copy with T on her channel. Did she do a link? Does she do a stream, you guys? Do you see a stream on her channel? I don't know if she did a stream or not. I have no idea. Jules, yeah. I did, oh my gosh, what did we do? We, we did um, 13, I think it was, one-offs. Only 13. I'm going to come back on. I need I need to do them, so I'm going to have to pack these up now and put them in bins. I still, have, I still have bags I haven't even gone through. I don't see a stream. You don't see a stream? She may have been too tired. She had a kind of stressful couple of days, you know, doing that that yard sale but all right you guys so we'll see you in the morning for coffee and i'm pretty sure t wants to roll it right into an auction now i don't know if i'm going to be able to be there because um my daughter changed her plans you guys when she called she doesn't want to go to dinner she wants to go to brunch tomorrow so i'm gonna call around to some places and see where we can go for brunch she'd rather go for brunch than for dinner the whole family, which will be nice. So that's what we'll do. Well, okay. if you go to brunch, you're not going to be able to be on at all. No, I'm not. I probably won't even be able to do coffee with her. Unless you push it back to Leonard, then you might be able to make it in. Yeah, because you no, know, she wants to go on and do coffee at 11. So she'll have to do coffee alone. And then she wants to roll it right into an auction, which, which is fine. And then I don't know if, if she's still on when I get back, I'll jump on. If not, I'll probably um, see you tomorrow night. Since, um, you know, she's wants to do brunch. 
Okay, you guys, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful, pleasant evening. Shriker, thank you for coming in, keeping me company, educating us about the books. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.